Michigan State and Iowa kick off the Big Ten football season. If you look at the series record, little to choose. Iowa up by a single game, but they won seven of the last eight. Yesterday, very frigid in Iowa City. Today, the temperature at game time, 52. Humidity, a low 35%. The wind is negligible, and the forecast is outstanding. And hello, everyone. I'm Jim Simpson. No, you can't throw out all of the other games that we have seen until right. today. Although the Big Ten does not play a preseason schedule, you would think so. The Florida States, the Notre Dames, the Northern Illinois, the Ball States are all gone. Today, they start for real in this stadium and in four other stadiums. And at the end of the rainbow is that trip to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena on New Year's Day. The favorites, Ohio State, Michigan, Iowa figures it's one of the favorites. Minnesota's undefeated. But let's get to today's game, Iowa and Michigan State. And Steve Davis, let's get back to Michigan State. Let's get back to the quarterback situation, Bobby McAllister. The team has not won when he has not played well. His statistics are not that good. But I have the opinion that you are of the opinion that it is not all Bobby McAllister's fault. Well, I think he's been victimized by a lot of people thinking it's Bobby McAllister's fault. The I formation puts pressure on the tailback and the quarterback. You've got to respond. Bobby's had a full load. He's had to do a lot of different things. They're trying to reduce his package, give him a better opportunity of really being able to operate under pressure. Simplicity, security, and consistency are the words that they're trying to give Bobby McAllister. And George Perlis has said he's got to get confidence. It's confidence restoration time. On the other side of the court, as Michigan State comes out, and Iowa is about to come out, as you can hear, we have Dan McGuire. And there are some reports around the Big Ten that maybe Hayden Fry, with his three-quarterback situation, is saying, McGuire, you are it because he wants him to be it, and he might be force-feeding Dan a little bit. Well, I, I don't want to second-guess uh, Hayden Fry at all, but he had a lot of success with taking Chuck Long as a sophomore and creating a quarterback, and I just will not second-guess Big Ten coaches, but McGuire's the guy, and he's got to be able to come out today and really exploit defenses and be the strong-arm player that they're so excited about, and I really think the key to the ball game today are the two quarterbacks going against two outstanding defenses and which of the offenses are being able to be effective today, which quarterback plays to his potential and settles down and gets the offense moving. You know the one thing we've not discussed, here comes Iowa right now. They will have Kevin Harmon as a tailback. Dave Dials on Big Ten today discussed Lorenzo White, but where is Lorenzo? He gained 226 yards here two years ago, but just about the same amount in all games thus far this year. Well, again, you've got to realize that they got behind early in their football games, and the pressure when you're in I formation, it's not a great catch-up offense either, especially with a young quarterback, and that's been the frustration. Lorenzo's had a lot of pressure on him. He'll respond today. The fun begins today. The Big Ten begins today with the competition kicking off of the 87 season right here at Kinnick Stadium. Iowa and Michigan State on the Big Ten Network. Well, they've always had sellouts here, 47 of the last 48 times, and it's another sellout today. Let's go down to John Snyder, who's with us along the sidelines. Uh, Jim and Steve, psychology and gamesmanship always plays a part in every game. For example, uh, Hayden Fry was very leery about letting reporters into his practice this week, so he may have something in store for Michigan State. And several years ago, when, Hyde, when uh, Fry became the coach here, he painted the visiting team's locker room pink because a psychologist told him that pink reduces aggressiveness. Now, whether or not that's had nothing, anything to do with the great Iowa State or the Iowa record here against Michigan State and other teams, there remains to be seen. But coaches will always look for that psychological edge, and Michigan State has been in a pink locker room. <laughs> Whatever Hayden Fry is doing, he's doing it right because he's a winningest coach in Iowa football history. Tom Quinn, our referee today, the umpire's head Hassel, James Mullendore, the head linesman, line judge Don Langlow, his nephew is a kicker for Michigan State. Sanders, the field judge, Dick Honick is the side judge, and the back judge is Jim Sherlock. Now, Michigan State won the toss, but deferred until the second half. And so, given the choice, Iowa has decided to receive. And so, Langlow will kick it off. Deep, Kevin Harmon, number 28, on one side. And on the other side, number one, Quinn Early. You start from scratch in the Big Ten standings. The record says Iowa is 3-1-0, and, oh, and Michigan State has won 2-0, and oh, but they haven't played in the Big Ten in 87 until now. Early at the 12-yard line and drops the football and falls on it at about the 13-yard line. Oh, here comes that Iowa offense led by Dan McGuire, the sophomore from Claremont, California. He has got a rifle for an arm. 
Kevin Harmon taking over for Bayless quite well as a tailback. Number 28, David Hudson hurt much of last year, but two touchdowns last week as your fullback. Mark Missouri, the junior split end out of Park Ridge, Illinois. And the other man is a man who fumbled the kickoff but got it back Quinn early, a senior out of Great Neck, New York. First down with a tall Dan McGuire. And with Kevin Harmon. Harmon's got blockers in front of him that picks up yardage out to about the 25 yard line. Where he's run out over there by Todd Crum. Offensive line, Marv Cook, the senior tight end. And he is a good one. Tackle, senior, Bob Cratch, all 270 pounds of him. Guard from Lamar's, Greg Fetters. At center, Bill Anderson out of Columbia Heights, Minnesota. Dave Alexander, the other guard, a senior. And the other tackle, Herb Wester out of Nashua, New Hampshire. Second down of three from the 25. And again, Harmon again some running room. Almost hit in the backfield. Now he runs out of all kinds of room and into lots of trouble. And down he goes. It'll be third down, a loss of yards. Third down and nearly four to go. Defensively for Michigan State from left to right. Joe Bergen, Mark Nichols, he is outstanding. Travis Davis, John Buddy, yes, the son of Ed Buddy, the brother of Brad. Linebackers Tim Moore and Percy Snow, they are outstanding and quick. That linebacker is Larson. Reed, a transfer from SMU. Barnett, Miller, and Crum are your defensive backs. Third down. And about three and a half. That is early in motion. And here comes the first pass. Wired all kinds of time now runs out and throws it for Hudson, who drops the ball at the 19. It's fourth down, and Mark Adams will have to come in and kick the ball away. Oh, no, Steve, not much there. Pickup of seven. Well, they'll have to kick it. I think that play just illustrated a little bit of what McGuire's problem is. Dan threw the ball. It was just a five, a five seven yard pass and throws it too low and, and not very soft. So he's got to get the touch and get the feel and the confidence that he's lacked. And that's the key early in the ball game. He needs to establish himself and make those plays happen. Mark Adams will kick the ball away to Andre Rison, who can fly. Number one. He is standing at the 35. Bryson will take the ball at about the 36 and simply runs away from a couple of folks and turns the corner and knocked out of bounds at the 47 yard line. That will be first and 10 from Michigan State. No doubt about their starting quarterback, it's Bobby McAllister out of Pompano Beach, Florida. Lorenzo White, the Heisman Hopi, hopeful, also out of Florida. And James Moore expected to start, although Joe Pugh will play a lot. Once for then, Andre Bryson, who just returned the punt. And the other is Woody Boyer out of Detroit, number 17. Looks like Joe Pugh is the starting fullback. Uh, all kinds of mix-ups. Boyer started in motion, but a couple of the Michigan State linemen moved. That'll be first and 15, moving the ball back inside the 45-yard line. Again, Tom Quinn, our referee. On the offense, repeat first down. They sell out the stadium, as we said, 47 of the last 48 times, and it's a struggle to get here. You can start two hours ahead of time and get here maybe in time for the game. But they load it up. They love their Hawkeyes. Michigan State, first and 15 from the 42. Lorenzo White. And gets out to the 45, a gain of three. It'll be second down and 12 from there. The offensive line for Michigan State. Tight end Mike Sargent, number 49, a senior out of Flint. At tackle, Tony Mandarich. Out of Ontario, Canada. Guard, Bob Kula. The center, Pat Shermer. Vince Tata is the other guard. And Dave Hool did not make the trip. Kevin Robbins is a late starter there. There goes Lorenzo, caught from behind. And put down at the 45-yard line. It'll be third down and about two to go. Defensively for Iowa. From left to right, Joe Mott, Myron Kepi, Dave Haight. He is terrific. Joe Schuster and Mike Burke. Linebackers Puck and Quast. 
They are good. The backs, Hanks, Brown, Bird, and Sistlin. Third down, a little bit more than a yard from the 45. No score early on first quarter. And now McAllister takes it, dangerously puts the ball forward, but he had the first down. The greatest confidence builder that Bobby McAllister can have is just the ability to move the football, move the team, make first and tens. Confidence means everything. It's not so much the offensive style, the eye formation, it's execution in their offense that they're in. And that's the real concern of the coaches. I mean, they came in very worried about Bobby McAllister and his ability to have the confidence to go and execute the offense. And he struggled, there's no doubt about it. But the thing is, they really believe if they can keep him under control, give him a limited package, that he'll be an excellent performer in this offense. Ryson is wide of the right. Greg Brown, the sophomore, is out there with single coverage on him. Now getting a little help from Burt. McAllister looking at overcoring his tight end, Mike Sargent. Down to the second down. Second down. What's so important about the play, not so much that it was an incomplete, but it's a very safe pass, again illustrating the confidence building that they want to put with Bobby McAllister. So he rolls out. It's a real open. The play's easy to throw. He overthrew it, but the thing is trying to build his confidence early on something that he can have some success with early in the ball game. You know Michigan State can play. If you don't believe that, ask the folks at Southern Cal. Second down, 10, McAllister, Lorenzo White again. Oh, he tripped over his own man. Tripped over one of his blocking offensive linemen and went down. It is third down. Now, White set a Big Ten record here two years ago in this stadium. He rushed 53 times. Number 64, Dave Hake. He, they've got to double-team him today. He is a prolific player for Iowa. He is the, the nose guard. They've got it, two men on him, and in fact, it doesn't hurt if uh, you tackle him a little bit there, too. <laughs> Dave Hayes' brother Mike is here. He was the number one draft choice of the Jets two years ago. Not one of those playing tomorrow. Third down, and still ten. And the fake to Lorenzo White. The counter gets the ball away. It's intercepted. Made a great grab. <laughs> How about that? It was in the defender's hand and it fell it into the right receiver. Out. Hanks had the ball and Sargent was there and Sargent wound up with the ball. This is one of the freaky plays of the Big Ten here already. Watch. Bad play by McAllister to throw it. The interception's almost going to be made, literally. And then watch. The ball just falls right as Sargent's on the ground and he's got the presence to put it away. Well, that is an incomplete interception. It does That's not right. go as an interception. That's right. It's fourth down. He had it, but it wasn't an interception. You're right. Fourth down, and here comes Langlow, and he will try from 53 yards out and be nowhere near. So the first offensive threat by Michigan State goes by the boards. We'll come right back with more Big Ten football. Whoops. Picked up the ball and began to run back. <laughs> okay, we'll be right back with more Big Ten football in a moment. The score here at Iowa City is... Iowa nothing and Michigan State nothing. $18, right? For your car. Muffler's more! <laughs> Save yourself the nightmare. Get the right muffler for the right price. Midas size. It's your new telephone from AT&T. It's cordless, has two channels for clarity, and knows you have more to do than just talk on the phone. Oh, no, you're not keeping me from anything. And you found it at Kmart. Here's Kmart, America's favorite store. 91 Bravo, proceeding on rescue training mission. One weekend a month, you can take off for the beach. The mountains. Or a drive in the country. In the Army Reserve. Subject spotted. Be all that you can be. It's no picnic, but it's the kind of excitement no other weekend offers. Mission completed. We're heading home. And you'll still have three weekends a month to take off on your own. Find your future in the Army Reserve. There's much confusion here from the officials. We saw it one way, they saw it another way. They have given Michigan State a penalty of 15 yards, whereas we were about to leave you because we thought I would call for a fair catch on that field goal attempt. And now 
They've got the ball at the 43, and apparently that's what's going to stand up, Steve. The penalty stood up for Michigan State. What happened is the deep man for Iowa was with his back to the ball was giving the fair catch signal. That should have made the ball where it was not to be advanced. But then Iowa advanced the ball, and I don't think the official acknowledged the fair catch sign by the deep man. And so that's the, the situation. Maybe they didn't see it, but I saw it. He, it was, he wasn't in position to catch the ball, but he gave, obviously, the fair catch sign. That we'll see if you're right. Now here's Langlow's first miss of the season. The question is whether or not it's he's waving it's no good. Well, I'm I'm sure it I'm sure it was well, no good and he should have known because the ball hit it about the 15. If he's waving it's no good, why all of a sudden does he turn his back and let the ball just sit there? They advance the ball. Anyway, the result is Michigan State called for a personal foul on the play, and Iowa's got outstanding field position just over its own 42-yard line. First time we've seen this spread formation from them and the pass on the backfield and good to Mark Cook the tight end and Cook's got the first down inside the 45 the first big offensive play of the day for either squad no score 10 44 to go first quarter first Big Ten game of 87 Iowa's defense along the sidelines Now split backs, Harmon and Hudson. And McGuire again to throw. That's the time, Dundee. Boys, he got the arm too. That is Quinn Early, and Early still on his feet going the wrong way, and he's going to go down losing four or five yards, trying to get away. You can see why the coaches of Iowa are so excited about Dan McGuire because of his arm strength and his, his height. He's 6'8". Early this time is going across. Really, it's almost an option route. That's one place to throw the ball. Throw it. He's wide open, waiting on the football, and then Early has that sensational speed, and he's trying to make something happen. He goes back, loses ground, but the point is trying to make something happen. An outstanding receiver for Iowa. Percy Snow put him down. Craig Clark has come in the tight end for Iowa. Kevin Harmon. Harmon being pursued out there and almost caught. Out there. John Buddy, one of the pursuers. Down by Joe Bergen. Second down. They're sending in the plays with the three tight ends. Marv Cook, Mike Flagg, and Craig Clark. So your tight ends for Iowa will change on about every play. Second down and more than five to go. Missouri wide left and early to the right. Ball at the 20. McGuire, under some pressure, gets the ball away. And Kevin Harmon gets it inside the 20, a pickup of several yards, and it's third down. Michigan State came into the ball game defensively believing that they had to mix it up for McGuire, give him a lot of looks. This is a blitz package. They come in trying to put pressure on him. They get there, but Mark, but Dan McGuire has the ability, the presence, to get away from the pressure and then throw a nice soft ball to Harmon. That's the kind of thing that they really want him to do more of, of being able to make the good throw using his athletic ability when he gets pressure. Wide receiver Devin Harberts, number 16, checks in. They have three wide receivers on third down four. pass early makes the play and we recall when he was seven or eight years old playing little league football the first time he caught a pass and went down the sidelines his mother jumped out of the stands and ran alongside of him until she realized how ridiculous she looked but she's very proud of her young man now and the extra point is added by Rob Houtland 
8.47 to go. The big play, 19-yard pass from McGuire to Early at 7 nothing. Iowa leads. And the 19-yard reception, Early, with a fine play after catching the ball, catches his second touchdown pass of the year. And Todd Crum was guilty of missing a tackle that might have staved it off, at least for a play. But Iowa looking good. There is George Murphy, a junior out of Greenwood, South Carolina. He is the man who kicks off. Houtland does not. And back deep are Craig Johnson, number 28, and Blake Ezer, and he can fly, number 26. He's on the far side. They'll try to keep it away from Ezer. Quite a story to Blake. You'll see a lot of him. He does the 40 and a little bit less than 4-4. But this is Craig Johnson at the 11. Johnson gets across the 30. Another look, McGuire to Early. There is not a more improved player on Iowa's team in four years than Quinn Early. The coaches say he has come a long way. He's got better body control, able to know where he is in terms of presence on the field to get away. And then the yards after the touchdown. What put it in? Michigan State took a chance, again, trying to make a blitz. There's the missed tackle right there by Todd Crum. The free safety didn't wrap him up and puts early great effort to get it in the end zone. First and 10, Michigan State. Lorenzo White. Not much there, but he gets a couple of yards out of it. It'll be second down and seven. Tripped up in the backfield by Dave Haight. The all Big Ten nose guard. 6'3", 260. As we said, his brother Mike was the number one draft choice of the Jets and is here in the stands. We hope to talk to him before this fall afternoon is over. Rise and wide to the right. State only scored eight points against Notre Dame, three last week against Florida State. Need to get something going. Lorenzo White carrying the ball. Look at this. Bumps off one of his own men and makes something out of it. A first down. Ran right up the back of one of his blockers, bounced off, and got out to the 45-yard line. The two things that really are, are clearly part of Lorenzo White and the way he runs is his vision on the field and his tremendous cutting ability. He's putting a lot of pressure on himself to be a great player for Michigan State, to make things happen, to make up the deficiencies of the other guys that are struggling right now. And there he has the presence of being able to make the move and to make something happen out of play that looked like it was shut down. They spot the ball at the 46. Now there's a rare happening. The fullback carried the ball. And until now, the two fullbacks have carried three times. Joe Pugh, that is his third carry of the year. He's a long jumper and a power lifter. He's not very big, 5'11", 218, but a redshirt sophomore out of Grand Rapids, and he's a good one. Second down and six to go the midfield. Lorenzo White. Looking for space in a crowd and very near the first down out to the 45-yard line of Iowa. It'll be third down and short. 7-0 Iowa, 7-10 to go first quarter. Lorenzo White, Archie Griffin, over 5,500 yards. Butch Wolfolk of Michigan, over 3,800. Bill Merrick of Wisconsin, 3,700. And Lorenzo White is right there, number four. And it seems a certainty, barring another injury this year, that he will move at least to the third place, if not into second place. Here, the Iowa game last year, well, really up at East Lansing, White hurt his knee, and that was the beginning of a long injury field filled season for him. Third and short, about a yard and a half. First down to the 40-yard line. McAllister with the good fake in the line. Let's go to John Snyder on the sidelines. Yes, Tim and Steve, we've just seen an example of uh, Quinn Early's athletic abilities. He scored that touchdown for Iowa. This is a calendar put out by the Iowa Athletic Department with uh, team photos and action pictures. He did the artwork, the montage on back of the calendar, all of the photos. He's going to be a commercial artist when he gets out of college if he doesn't play in the NFL. You know, the media guide says, John, that he's very talented as a commercial artist. I didn't know how talented until I saw that. He's good. First down. And there's Lorenzo White. What a move there and gets down to about the 32-yard line and the flag goes down maybe against Iowa.
That is Dwight Sistrunk talking to the officials. That's the face mask. Sistrunk, the name sounds familiar. His uncle plays for the Raiders. This will be a first down for Michigan State, trailing by seven. What is so exciting about Lorenzo White, so many great backs have one dimension they're very good in. He is both a slasher, a cutter, and a speed back. See him being able to make those moves, to make the jump, to do whatever it takes to make people avoid him. People don't get great hits on Lorenzo White, and he's got that rare blend of several different talents that give him the ability to be a combination back that's very versatile. Uncle Otis is a lot bigger than Dwight. He's only 183 pounds. First down inside the 30 is Lorenzo White. Gee, he can make some cuts, can he? And down he goes inside the 20-yard line, picking up another eight yards. Sistrunk made the stop along with Schuster. Again, John Snyder. Yes, Dave Haight, the outstanding nose guard of Iowa, came off the field with a bloody nose, was treated by the trainers. He'll be back in the game momentarily. He's a good one. <laughs> bloody nose. <laughs> there he is. Second down and about two to go. Michigan down by seven driving. There's the fullback again. And look out. Ball is out of bounds. Few carried the ball, lost the ball, but belongs to Michigan State. No one had possession. That's one of my favorite plays. In fact, <laughs> if I ever got close to the sidelines, the only way I get more yards is fumble forward. Good e effort by Joe Pugh to jump, first of all, then to keep his balance. And then the ball gets away from him, but they're very lucky. You've got to be lucky so many times in college football. The ball takes the right bounce and gets out of bounds. No possession. The ball goes out right there in possession of Michigan State. 7-0. Iowa, Michigan State first and goal to go at the two. Lorenzo White jumps into the end zone. He was airborne for a long while. And now, Langlo, who missed a 53-yard field goal attempt, his first miss of the year, will try to add his fourth consecutive point after touchdown without a miss to tie this at seven. Michigan State really is doing a good job. they able to create a seam. The fullback goes through to give Lorenzo the ability to jump and then just to be carried into the end zone with his momentum. Langlo has tied up the game after nearly a 70-yard drive. We got a tie. We'll be right back here with more Big Ten football in a moment. They scored Iowa City, Iowa 7, and Michigan State just scoring 7. This is what other muffler shops give you. Dan McGuire to be starting quarterback over Poholsky and Where We ask him for his opinions of Dan McGuire. Ben McGuire is an outstanding talent. He just needs to be developed. He will become better and better as the game progresses. He has an extremely quick arm. And there he is. He has just thrown 19 yards moments ago for the Iowa touchdown. And Lorenzo White, he was a big part of that 68-yard drive that Michigan State just had to tie this game at seven. Langlo to kick off and Quinn Early deep. There's your drive information. Here's Langlo. And this will be a chance for Early. Oh, oh way up of about the 18. He fumbled it again, and I think Michigan State has it. That's the second fumble, and I do believe under there you'll find the white they say it belongs to Michigan State. How about that? And Michigan State with a big, big turnover. Carlos Jenkins is the man who got it. He's a redshirt freshman out of Boynton Beach, Florida, and he has given his team quite a thrust. I really believe the problem may be the sun. We saw the same problem at Purdue last week in the Purdue Notre Dame game, and it looked like on both times that Quinn Early has tried to feel the kick, he struggled with the sun in his eyes. Big chance for the Spartans. There's Lorenzo White. Whoops, nobody there. Let's see on the kickoff return if Quinn Early is struggling with the sun. 
from the direction that we have here at the booth, he's really looking almost right into it. Quinn Early has good hands. He's a receiver. Quinn Early could tell us. <laughs> Second down and eight. We have a tie game. 440 to go first quarter and the opening day of the Big Ten. It is seven all. Ryzen comes wide to the right. Boyer is just flanked. Or rather, Ryzen to the left. Boyer just flanked to the right. And now in motion. McAllister looking. Not going the other way. A flag is down on the field at the 20. McAllister's inside the 20 and knifed down across the way on a fine tackle by J.J. Puck. But remember, there was a flag down at the 20 before this play, uh, play really developed. Michigan State in their style do a lot of moving around motion trying to get to certain sets in terms of offensively. Watch Boyer 17 and Ryzen number one collide during the same area. That might have been the problem. McAllister couldn't find an open receiver. They were dancing in the end zone. <laughs> the penalty will be against Michigan State. And they're still talking it over with Iowa. These games. Well, let's listen to our referee, Tom Quinn. I'm going to tell us. He's going to show us. A couple of men in motion there. That should not have been. The games, the last five games between Iowa and Michigan State, and remember, it is a tie now, have been decided by three, then four, then one, then six, then six. 20 points in five games have totaled the difference in those five games. Second down. Oh, they look like they're all moving again. Time to get a slightly different signal. They'll play a one arm over the other. And then they'll move them back again. Big break to recover that fumble, and then two straight five yard penalties. This is the second. Let's see the left tackle, Tony Mandrich, number 79. He's in movement. Good effort by Joe Schuster, 72, to have the presence of mind to see the movement to go out and hit him on the helmet and get the penalty. Second down and 19 to go. They got to get the ball inside the 12. There's Lorenzo White. Always looking, isn't he? He got a couple of the yards back and gets down near the 25. But they still have a bundle to go on third down. Third down and about 13. This is a real opportunity for Michigan State. You don't get too many opportunities where you get plus field position early in the ball game trying to give confidence. This is a time you can experiment with your quarterback and do some things. So they really need to convert something. Field goal, touchdown, any type of points. In the meantime, their own miscues have cost them 10 yards. There's McAllister dropping back and throwing for Ryzen on the side, and he can't quite get to it. Sistrunk was over there with him, but Ryzen again was looking back into that sun, almost squarely in his eyes, and couldn't handle it. Anybody that uh, considers Bobby McAllister's arm suspect, watch Ryzen. I think it's a good throw and a good effort, just a little bit overthrown. Back behind him a little bit, but McAllister really had the presence to throw a good ball. Unfortunately, he couldn't throw it right to the receiver. You're right. It was more overthrown than it was a sudden situation. A 42-yard field goal attempt by Langlo, who missed one of 53 yards, didn't come close. From 42 yards out, will this make it? We will see. No, it hits, hits the side, and that is his second field goal missed. Well, a great opportunity. A fumble at the 22. They lost yardage on the play. It is 7-7, 3 to go, first quarter. Backing situation, we also ask him about Michigan State's quarterback, McAllister. I think Bob McAllister is one of the most gifted uh, run-pass quarterbacks in the nation. Uh, he's a great scrambler. We, we're going to have to be extremely careful trying to contain him, and also, once we get him in the pocket, is to break down and get under control to tackle him, or he'll be gone. From the 25, Iowa having thwarted Michigan State. First down, McGuire remains your quarterback, of course. As the time and as a man coming out here, that's his tight end, Marv Cook. And Cook has wrestled down after a gain of about seven yards.
tackle was made by Barnett. There's Marv Cook coming off. Second down and short. Wake Forest over Army 7-3. North Carolina State, which bombed Maryland last week over Bobby Ross of Georgia Tech, 7-0. Tennessee leads California 3-0. First quarter. Second down and three. Uh, McGuire checks and sends his team into an eye formation. And a handoff to Harmon. Harmon, that's Barnett that got him first, and finally he is wrestled down by Percy Snow, number 48, the middle linebacker. But first down Iowa, and a flag is down at the 48. And it may be another face mask. Face mask. The linebackers of Michigan State are excellent players, Moore, Snow, and Larson. This time, Percy Snow, 48. He has to take on the Fetters, the left guard, and he is out of the play right there. He's eliminated, and he's in a situation where now he's got to go play chase to find Harmon, and Harmon breaks into the secondary. Blocking the linebacker was the key on the play. I'm sorry, Steve. You know, and right there's the face mask. This man, as you see the face mask, as he's been talking about, is the second all purpose runner in the Big Ten thus far this year. And you really, outside of Iowa and in the coaching staffs of other schools, don't hear too much about Kevin Harmon. They're saying, Where's Rick Bayless? He'll be back in a matter of weeks. First down. Wire has his man over here. That's his tight end, Frank Clark. And that's another big pickup. And McGuire is doing very well, thank you. Iowa coming into the ball game today, too, like the Michigan State coaches with McAllister, chose to reduce the package of Dan McGuire. Don't try to give him too much. Give him the confidence and good throw to Clark. Purdue and Minnesota tonight on most of these Big Ten stations at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Six of seven for McGuire, including a touchdown pass. Pretty good start in Big Ten. Second and short. Nothing here for Harmon. Tries to make something out of it. Part of the key on the play for Michigan State's success that time, they slant what they call their, their down tackles that are actually over the guards for uh, in their defensive style. And that time they slant them a little bit. They almost turn them sideways, and they was able to push the lineman back into the play and force a wider path by the back, and that's what caused the play to fall apart. Third down and two to go from the 40-yard line of Michigan State at seven all in the last two minutes of the first quarter. Harmon, and he's got the first down. First down. Down to about the 37. You just wonder, Steve Davis, about how you do recover when you realize that your special teams gave you the ball at the 22, and your own mistakes put you back almost your own 35 on two penalties, and you settle for a missed field goal that hit the side bar. Well, that's been the problem. They've not been able to convert and make things happen when they had opportunities, and then they've got themselves behind in frustrating situations where they had to play catch-up. Travis Watkins, who played with Dan McGuire in Claremont, California, number two is wide to the left and early is to the right. And McGuire still got the ball. He's looking for Harmon out of the backfield. Good play there and a good tackle there by Travis Davis, the sophomore tackle, peeling back from the line of scrimmage. But it's a big gain of seven yards down to the 30-yard line, and Iowa in this tie game is on the move. What you can get excited about Dan McGuire for is that he's known for his ability to throw the ball 75 yards, but he's really, I think today, standing tall, and he is tall at 6'8", but throwing a soft pass to his short receivers, not having to force the ball downfield, and that's the flexibility that generally a sophomore young quarterback struggles with. Watkins wide to the left. Second and short. Harvard with the ball. Harmon does not get the first down again. It'll be third down and short. How do you think the McGuire family feels with one brother likely to be the rookie of the year in the American League has set the rookie home run record and the other younger brother starting at quarterback in the Big Ten for Iowa? Not bad. Makes for a long athletic season when you consider baseball through football season. <laughs> third down and three to go. 
when do the parents get a vacation from worrying and watching? Third and short. McGuire being chased. McGuire throws and may have his And a flag goes down. That was interference anyway. That's the end of the quarter. The catch was made by Mike Flagg. And they're going to say it is against Iowa that Flagg may have pushed off. Let's see which way Tom Quinn points. It's against Iowa. The fans are a little shocked. They'll sort this out. In actuality, the quarter is over. But let's just see what happens here. We have offensive pass interference. Boss it down here. So instead of first we will, down, we will extend it down for one period. For one play, no clock. He will extend down, the period for one down the to the one down. One Sounds down, like me down there on the clock. field. Takes the ball back to the 45-yard line, and instead of first down, it is fourth down, and 17 make it 18 to go from the 45. So another big opportunity has gone by. And how often have you seen a quarter extended by a play? It happens, but not often. Well, there's the push off by the receiver. Dan McGuire should not have made the throw. He once again proved that he's still a sophomore and needs more time. Now look at this. Fourth down from the 45. Back is Crum. And you note that Mark Adams does not stand very deep. About eight to nine yards. Angling it across the way. Crum inside the 10 is going to let it hit and it'll go into the end zone. So now the quarter is over. The ball will be brought up to the 20-yard line. First and 10. Little to choose is there. Iowa 7. Michigan State 7. Again, the second quarter. It is 7 all. Michigan State with the ball. First and 10 at the 20. Dallas and here comes Lorenzo White. Blockers in front of him. Good cut to the outside. And wrestled out on a saving tackle by Greg Brown. The cornerback on that side. That's more than enough for a first down. That's a 19-yard pickup out to the 39-yard line. Talking about Kinnick Stadium, we should talk a little bit about Niall Kinnick. A lot of folks do not remember him outside of Iowa because he played in 1939. He was a male athlete of the year in the USA. He won the Heisman Trophy. He won the Walter Camp. He won the Maxwell Trophy. He was a Phi Beta Kappa and unfortunately lost his life in the service in 1943 and is after that great player that this stadium is named. Here's Lorenzo White again. Finds daylight. Takes a hard hit, but he's got another six yards out to the 46 or 7-yard line of Michigan State. And White is having a very productive day. Lorenzo White two years ago had 226 yards against Iowa and last year only 41. So he's had certainly everybody's contrasted his years two years ago when he had the prolific uh, sophomore year and when he struggled last year. But Lorenzo really wants the coach to say he's putting so much pressure on himself in 1987 he wants something to happen big james moore the fullback very close to the first down does not have it the man down at the bottom is myron Kepi, a senior out of durant iowa who made the stop dave hake the nose guard for iowa really is an outstanding player he's a super great effort player very strong he has a tendency to move around so quick he's go, got a lot of movement sometimes he's not real physical but this time they put him in the right position the slants there and he's able to make the big play sometimes his quickness gets him in trouble so give hate the tackle and kepi an assist third down and short two yards to go they got to get the ball the nose of it on the midfield strike and McAllister will do just that. He's got the first down at the 50-yard line. Michigan State keeps the drive alive. It is 7-all early in the second quarter. Big Ten today. Michigan at Wisconsin. Purdue at Minnesota. That's on many of these Big Ten stations tonight. Northwestern at Indiana. Ohio State at Illinois. Bobby McAllister in high school ran a real wide open offense. Basically, they gave him the ball and said, sick him. And the thing, <laughs> thing about Bobby is that... Now, the, 
where he's struggling is being in a structured environment, and they're trying to be able to give him a little bit of the impromptu, and yet with a little bit of structure. Lorenzo White is having a big day. He is carrying the ball a number of times, 53 times he carried against Iowa in this stadium two years ago, and thus far today he's carried 14 times, and we're early in the second quarter. And 89 yards, that's impressive. They said he's only got, what, 200 plus yards this year, very low, but he's already got nearly 100 already. Second down eight, the ball at the 48 of Iowa, seven all, rising wide to the left. Here's that man again, and he's got another first down. Picks up the first down inside the 40. Let's check in with Dave Diles. Stuck him, bringing him up short. Football fans down at Texas Tech, Lubbock, haven't had a whole lot to cheer about in recent years, but number 81, Tyrone Thurman, he's been five feet two. He gave him a thrill today, 74 yards on this punt return, Texas Tech leading te a highly favored Texas A&M, 7-0. Back to our game at Iowa City. Where David is tied, as you know, 7-all. First and 10 at the 39. Michigan State on a drive from their own 20. The up man is Moore, the fullback, and boy, does he run over some people and picking up five or six yards. He just buried a few people on his way with that six-yard run. Last night, talking to Norris Watts, the offensive coordinator for Michigan State, they said that really after the two games of, of struggling and making mistakes, Notre Dame, the Notre Dame game, and the frustration of Florida State, that they wanted to restore confidence, that that was the main goal in this ball game early on, and then to be able to convert on the third down play. And that's coming up in just a second after this play. Second down three, Pew replaces Moore in the backfield. And yes, Lorenzo White is still there. yard line. Boy, he is something else and very difficult to hang on to. The tackle made down there by Brad Quast, number 35. There's the rushing yardage thus far, 138 for Michigan State, only 30 for Iowa. The big Iowa thrust thus far has been a 19-yard touchdown pass from McGuire to early. It's seven all. Sistrunk comes off the field for Iowa. Close to a first down, fourth down. I do believe we'll wait for them to spot the ball, and here we come with a decision time, Steve. Langlow has not had the strong leg from 53 and inside the 40. So I would imagine they may go for it. They've got just about one yard to go. Well, they've they, got Lorenzo White. They've had success, obviously, in the ball game, moving the ball on the ground, and I would think that they will stay on the ground. The option play was probably not the best call. They're not experienced at running it, and nor is their quarterback. Fourth down and one from the 30 of Iowa. Lorenzo White. No! Iowa takes over. That's two. We'll come right back with more Big Ten football in a moment. The score is tied. Iowa, Michigan State at seven. A fumble, as we said, at the 22. Couldn't go anywhere for Michigan State. Fourth and one. Lorenzo White, one of the top backs in the country, couldn't go anywhere. And an emotional up for Iowa, both cases. Well, I, but the key is that Michigan State's gaining confidence in their running attack, and I think that's what the real key is right now. The game's still tied up, and there's got to be some positives that have come out of that for their offensive coaches and the offensive team. 10-16 to go. We're tied at 7-all. And here comes Iowa. McGuire, your quarterback, still has the football. And to the far side, the ball is caught by the man he used to play with at Claremont California in high school, Travis Watkins. Number two. And that is enough for a first down to the 42. 
What Iowa does so well in their passing attack is to be able to stretch you vertically and hit on different levels. See the guy short? There they go to Watkins, number two, deeper. So they really stretch the secondary, the linebackers, and everyone. And McGuire, with his great height, is just able to stage it down. If there's no one open deep, then come short to the next receiver. And they do such a great job of uh, exploiting the defensive secondary. McGuire, 8 of 10 for 106 yards. This is Harmon, no place to go. Loss on the play. Interesting to see Bergen made the sack until that play in the previous games by Michigan State. And you know they played three games. There had only been two sacks, and that was by, they were by Percy Snow. And there was not a sack, that was a tackle for a loss. And there haven't been too many of those, but Bergen did the job. He was a junior college All-American out of Elmhurst, Illinois. A loss of eight, second and 18 from a 33. for early and dancing over there was Harlan Barnett, the cornerback on that side. The redshirt sophomore out of Cincinnati, Ohio, number 36. And now suddenly this third down. Mark Nichols, number 83, the defensive tackle. There he is. He is a really fine player. But watch him. He's getting some help. And he's got to fight. I mean, this is the life of a defensive lineman. Every day, every play, you fight, you fight, and you get there, and the play's already over. Harberts is wide to the right, number 16. On third and very long. Looking out here, and there was a stop and go, and almost intercepted back there by Derek Reed, the transfer from SMU. It's fourth down. Intended for early. When SMU dropped its program, Derek Reed, the man of defense here, came to Iowa. Quinn Early really has the ability to run all sorts of res routes. It look, looked like he was confused. Looked like he didn't press it on down the field. When he turned up, you've got to make something happen. It really gave Reed, number six, the ability to roll back and be able to play pass defense. Mark Adams will kick the ball away. And there's Andre Rise into his deep, and he's got the sun in his eyes now. Let's see how he does. He's got the ball and almost bobbled. Risen gets away and out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Good field position for Michigan State. 8.46 to go. First half in Iowa City. Iowa 7 at Michigan State 7. It's had good defense. What about the 1987 edition of the Hawkeyes defense? Well, the defense is really the, uh, the miracle story of the Hawks in 87. Uh, we had to replace seven defensive starters. Uh, after the first game, we had to come up with four new ones because they were injured. And those young men have really progressed far beyond my wildest dreams. And right now, we are a good defensive football team and should become much better. Aiden Fry went on to say that they could be at the tops of the Big Ten and in the top ten in the nation by season's end. Right now, they're locked in the 7-7 tie. Risen's return to the 41, first down. Boyer in motion. McAllister, he's got some room up the middle. Now he dumps it off here, and few cannot pick the ball up off the ground at the 43. It's 7-7 here. Let's see what Dave Diles has. Another sellout crowd at Ann Arbor, as always, 76 in a row. And the freshman, Alan Jefferson, has Michigan's Wolverines out in front of Wisconsin, 7-0, still in the first quarter. Back to you, Jim. Wisconsin under rookie coach Don Morton having a tough time getting going. Ball at the 41-yard line here. Seven, or rather, 8.37 to go in the first half. And it's all tied. Second and 10 from the 41. Pitch back this time to Lorenzo White. And the man who was up top was Greg Brown, number 29. To make the stop, and it'll be third down and long. Tennessee way out in front of California now by 17. Wake Forest over Army at the half, same score, 7-3. Penn State, 3 nothing. Temple always gives Penn State fits. North Carolina trading Auburn. Auburn, an outstanding team, as we all know. And North Carolina State shutting out Georgia Tech at the half. Third and eight. Flag 
down. Question, did they take too much time? Or was it an offensive man who moved? In any event, it'll be a dead ball foul because the flag went down before they could get the playoff. Dead ball, ball start on the offense. Could have been Robbins on the right side. Number 71, Ke Kevin Robbins is starting today. It was not his. He was not going to be the starter. He hasn't played a whole lot, so you can see that he's. Uh, a little bit premature in being able to get set for the pass. Stevie's another one of those transfers. Wichita State dropped a football program, and so Kevin Roberts came over and enrolled at Michigan State. Third down. 13 to go. McAllister has the time and has risen. Risen wasn't looking until the ball was on his left shoulder, and it was thrown behind him at that. And it's fourth down. Again, if you're an offensive coach, you look at for different positives. Bobby McAllister set in the pocket. That's been a problem. He's not done it. He's going to rise and rise and looks back a little bit late. The ball was behind him, but the point was Bobby McAllister stood in the pocket, didn't jump the gun, and be it was able to throw the ball imperfect, but he threw it. Well, here's an All-American, Greg Montgomery, fine punter, averaging better than 46 yards per punt this year. That's 12 punts of more than 50 yards. Ah, that's what we're talking about. Run, go, go, go. Peter Marciano returns the ball. We'll come right back with more Big Ten football in a moment. The score remains the same. Iowa Michigan State tied it. Return that punt to the 19-yard line. He is from Brockton, Massachusetts, and I'm sure you've heard of another Marciano from Brockton. By the name of Rocky, well, that's Peter's uncle, the late Rocky Marciano, the undefeated heavyweight champion of the world. And Peter is playing football in Iowa. The ball is at the 19, 7-7, 7, 7, 7 39 to go, first half, first and 10, Iowa. Harvard's wide to the right, and Travis Watkins to the left. They have three wide receivers in there and only one running back. They're really geared to the pass, Steve. Down he goes, and that is Travis Davis, the sophomore out of Warren, Ohio. And that's only the third sack of the year for Michigan State, the first for Travis Davis. A loss of nine yards back to the 10, second down and 19. Davis had quite a spring. And that elevated him to the starting spot. He's got something coming up next week. Nate Rogers plays for Michigan. And Michigan State plays Michigan. Nate Rogers is Travis Davis's cousin. Little family feud. Early in motion. McGuire going back to his running game, but not for much. In the backfield, it looked as though Mark Nichols got to him first, and there's a flag down. Nichols was across the line in a shot. Holding charged against, trying to keep Nichols and others out. It was not Nichols who actually made the play. Watch. The two inside, Davis and Nichols, are extremely aggressive. They do a lot of stunning, and they kind of pinch down there, and they angle. I think that there's the hold right there. It is on Nichols. It's by, uh, let's see, is that Alexander 55? 55's holding Nichols, and that brought on the penalty. Can't block him, hold him. Third down and 19 to go. First down, 19. You know, we said it at the outset, Steve, but it seems to be true. And maybe the complexion of their game will change in the second half. But every time these two teams take the field in recent years, it's been very close. Kick the ball away. Almost looked as though it was partially blocked, and it might have been deflected. Winnell is going to let it go out of bounds. He's still with two kickoffs, and he didn't want to mess around with that bouncing ball. But here's the best field position of the day aside from win. There was a fumble at Michigan State recovered at the 22. They've got it at the 43. Next week, Steve and I will be in the suburbs of Chicago in Evanston, Illinois, Minnesota, which started the day. One of the few perfect record teams in the nation, 3-0, plays Northwestern, which goes home under Francis Pay, trying to make itself known within the Big Ten. But we'll get a good look at Northwestern and Foggy and Minnesota. 
Our score seven all. Put the ball on the 43, and State is putting the pressure on Iowa. Not much there. The frustration of the Michigan State offensive coaches at halftime will be, hey guys, we've had the ball at our own 46, our own 33, their 23, our own 20, our own 41, and their 43, and we haven't been able to make anything happen except the one touchdown. They have had the opportunities and the field position. That's what they were concerned about, having to go long distances against a good defense. That's not been the story. Blake Ezer got nothing on that play. Here's McAllis on second down. Becoming a defensive battle, McAllister down inside the 50-yard line at the 48. And getting up is that man, Dave Haight, who led the way. Eight, number 64, McAllister down, and now let's put the long yardage figures up for Michigan State, third and 18. White has 101 yards, and Iowa when they have run the ball, have not been that successful, but Iowa's been a passing team most of the way. Third down play. Look out, Bobby McAllister. Boy, he makes things happen, doesn't he? Will not get the first down out of this. It's fourth down. And about five to go from inside the 40-yard line. At one time, McAllister was back inside his own 35. Tell you what, that play wore me out. I <laughs> thought it was never going to get over. Watch it. Andre Rise at number one. Let's see if he gets a little bit of uh, affection from the secondary back. We'll hold him a little bit. That's one way to keep him out of the play. That's... Would you say that's flagrant? <laughs> Burt, limping around a little bit, might have been bumped in the leg by McAllister, and time has been called by Michigan State, not by Iowa, so Burt will get a little rest. 4.33 to go with Iowa City, Iowa 7, Michigan State. Two wide receivers, so Fry is going to the air apparently, but he hands it off to Duncan, his fullback. And Duncan gets some running room out across the 15-yard line. Check that Dave Hudson. I said Duncan. Dave Hudson, number 20. Hudson was slowed last year by a muscle pull, but had a pretty good game last week against Kansas State. Pretty good. Two touchdowns. Watkins to the left on second down and about a yard to go. Now the tailback, Harmon, picks up the first down. Oh, Iowa moves out of immediate difficulty. Central Michigan leading Kent State first quarter, 6 nothing. Kent's back. Last week. <laughs> Columbia and Pennsylvania. Oh, Columbia's got that long, long losing streak. No score first quarter. Michigan, Western Michigan, that is, over Toledo is 7 nothing first quarter. West Virginia, 7 nothing over East Carolina. We saw West Virginia against Ohio State. Brown and Princeton, no score first quarter. I'm going to buy me a sweatshirt from Kent State. <laughs> Picks it up and down he goes. Ball just bounced right out of his hands. Didn't look like a firm handoff at all. And off the hands of Hudson and finally picked up by McGuire. I was really sloppy on offense here in the, in the second quarter. They've not played very well. They've had missed exchange. They fumbled the ball. They've done things that the offensive coaches really felt like that they had eliminated. And they, coming in the ball game, they knew we've got to eliminate our turnovers. They'd gone 130 plays early in the season without an interception. Then in 30, the next 30, they had six interceptions. So they're sloppy. Second down on 16. McGuire with room. Throws it out here. Harmon gets up to about the 24-yard line. Where it's put down by Crum and company. The real flexibility what, that Kevin Harmon gives them is here is a guy that's in the backfield that's able to make things happen. 
catch the ball, and then he's the back, and he can run with it after he catches it, and that's a real luxury to be able to get him. Watch Mark Nichols, number 83. We saw him earlier really getting beat up. They're trying. They're going to do some sort of a swap or some sort of change. There it is, and boy, he's having to take it on every time, and it is not fun being a defensive lineman because you just have to fight and fight, and a lot of times you get there and nothing's there. Third down and two, the down and out. Intended out there for Travis Watkins, but it's fourth down, and against Iowa's offense comes up short. You know, the hardest thing for Dan McGuire, the quarterback, is not to put the pressure on himself. The coaches have said, you're the number one quarterback. Now, be the quarterback and be confident. They've reduced your package, and don't put too much pressure on yourself. But because he's a competitor from an athletic family, they knew this problem would be is that he'd try to do too much. I think he's overextended a little bit in the first half. Derek Reed has made several outstanding plays at cornerback. Here's Mark Adams to kick. Wow, almost blocked, but was not. Ryzen will pick it up. Looking for some place to go and gets out to about the 34-yard line. The pressure was really on Adams at that moment, and a flag is down again. John Miller made the stop. And watch this. You made the point earlier, Jim. Iowa really does not get too deep in terms of their punter. Michigan State believes they could block a punt today. They do get enough of it. That's why you don't have the roughing, roughing of the kicker. But they are knocking on the door to try to knock one down. Holding is called against Michigan State on the return. So instead of being near the 35-yard line, they'll move the bar back to the 24-and-a-half-yard line. John, let's watch and see. You've got to take the right angle where the ball is going to be at the foot. I don't see how he missed it. I don't see how he missed it. You know something, Steve, and I know you remember. That is the second either almost blocked or deflected punt that Michigan State has gotten close to Adams on. They may get one yet. It's 7 all, 150 to go in the half. And here goes the red for White. White turns the corner and goes out of bounds. A pickup of five. Let's check it now with Dave Dials in our studios. Bo Schembechler just doesn't lose to Wisconsin. It's now 21-0, just into the second quarter. And in the first quarter alone, Jamie Morris, who got the last touchdown on a 35-yard run, has 100 yards and 10 carries. Texas Tech was leading A&M 14-0. It's now tied at 14. Back to Jim Simpson. All right, Dave, Lorenzo White has now carried for 106 yards. He had 206 in the first half against Indiana a couple of years ago, so this is not that big a half for Lorenzo White. He has done bigger things. The lost the football. White lost the football and gets back to it. Got his third at about seven now. I was saying they've got the ball. As I glad they did. White did not get back to it. And it's that man, Hate. First big break for Iowa at the 28-yard line. Lorenzo has exceptional hands and has not been prone to fumble the ball. It looked like he might have got the ball a little bit high on his chest, and then Dave Hake, 64, just goes in and wrestles the ball away and gets the fumble. And they're pretty good at Iowa in terms of wrestling. I tell you what, Dan McGuire, for the first time in a long while, Steve, has some room with which to operate here. He's inside a 30-yard line. He has been backed up at his own territory for most of the quarter. First down. Harmon with the ball. Harmon's still on his feet, and Crum finally makes the stop after a pickup of eight yards down to the 20. Michigan State almost had Kevin Harmon on two occasions. Finally got him after an eight-yard pickup. The play was a combination of exceptional running by Harmon, but poor tackling by Michigan State as two guys had a chance to make the tackle on Harmon, and they just bounced off of him. Great running backs make that happen. Harmon has now carried for 32 yards. Look at this big back formation they've got here on third down and two. Hudson's got the first down down near the 16-yard line. David Hudson. 50 seconds to go on the clock. 
They've been running it down here where they've got room not throwing the ball. 50 seconds, a lot of time for Iowa, especially when they've got the ability to throw the ball the way they do. There's the standing tight end, and we'll talk about what he does. He makes contact so much quicker. He can read the coverages. He communicates to his quarterback. He does a lot of things from that position. It is 7-all. McGuire still with the ball. Look out, McGuire gets the ball away, and down quickly is Harmon. Larson put him down. They've called timeout with 27 seconds to go in the half. We'll come right back with more Big Ten football in a moment. Iowa threatening the score 7 7. Anxious moments for everybody. George Perlis of Michigan State. And on the other side, Hayden Fry. The ball is at the 14 yard line. It is second down. About eight to go. 27 seconds on the clock. And Iowa by our recollection, has both. Well, they've got two of the three timeouts left. Wire still with the football. Throws it out there. No flag. Quinn Early was the man out there. He was tackled as he hit to the sidelines, but the ball was thrown out of bounds. Michigan State was in man coverage that time. Working, Reed is working, number six, the SMU transfer is working on early. Boy, he's right on him. <laughs> You're right. Boy, he's covering him like a glove. Third down. For those who may not realize it, in Derek Reed, we said he's a transfer of SMU after they're forced to give up football. There's no penalty on the players that go ahead and transfer. In other words, Reed for the last two years was left cornerback at SMU and with no break in time at all, but a different school. He's left cornerback for state at the moment. Wire puts the ball up for Watkins. Touchdown! You will be thrown to his buddy from Fairmont, California. to appreciate that there. You can't throw the ball much better now. No, really a perfectly thrown ball, and I think the inability to put the pressure on him made the difference. Bob Howard. It's 14-7. The fumble recovery by Hayden at the 28. Leads to the touchdown. Go-ahead touchdown by Iowa. As the men from Claremont, California, Dan McGuire throws to teammate Travis Watkins, who gets his first collegiate touchdown. Dan McGuire is a strong arm thrower. If you don't put a lot of pressure on him, this is too much time. He steps in the pocket, stays right there. He's immovable and throws a perfect ball right where it had to be. There was good coverage there. Perfect throw of being able to have the soft. What happened was McGuire took a little bit more time. The ball should be thrown right here. Throw the ball. He's free. He's open. But the problem is McGuire's trying to find him. And then now he's got to really press and throw the ball into coverage a little bit more. They're, they're beginning to recover, but he throws the perfect strike. That's a pair of hands that Watkins has got, too. He is from Claremont, California, as we said. But mom and dad are from the Hawkeye State, Iowa, 14-7. Michigan State had the big fumble recovery at the 22. Got nothing out of it. That was in the first quarter. Iowa gets the fumble recovery of Lorenzo White in the second quarter at the 28 and comes up with a go-ahead touchdown. Fifteen seconds left. That's Blake Ezer. He's got a lot of speed. And you pick... Whoops, I was going to say picked up by one of the up men. No such thing. Percy Snow jumps on the ball. 12 seconds to go. Dave Dial to be with us with more scores and highlights. We're going to have an interview with the Michigan, or rather the Minnesota coach who plays Pitt, uh, Purdue tonight, and he will be on live at halftime, looking ahead to tonight. And then we will see Don Grimkiss next week at Northwestern. 
And then we'll have the Iowa Hawkeye marching band, and Steve will be looking at the first half highlights. Personal foul charged against Michigan State after the play. So we'll just try to run this thing out. 12 seconds to go, and the ball is inside their territory, inside the 10 yard line. Put it down at the seven. Beautiful fall afternoon. Temperature climbing towards 60 on this first day of the 1987 Big Ten Conference play. The number one priority coming into the ball game for the Michigan State offensive football team, as said by Norris Watts, their coordinator, was to eliminate mistakes. They must be reduced and eliminated, and the mistake on the fumble cost them the 14-7 lead to Iowa. Steve Lorenzo White can make something happen. He's the man who fumbled the football. Holds on to it, and time will run out. No one in any eager situation to stop the clock. They do not. Go ahead, touchdown from McGuire to teammate Watkins. Makes it 14 to 7. Iowa at the half. There you can see a little bit of what happened in results of uh, the different possessions of Iowa. They did not have the luxury of the field position that Michigan State had. There you can see a little bit of what happened in results of uh, the different possessions of Iowa. They did not have the luxury of the field position that Michigan State had. Michigan State had excellent field position, but they could not convert. Missed field goals, the fumble, the things that really Michigan State has to eliminate from their plan, and they were unable to accomplish it in the first half. George Murphy will kick off to Greg Johnson and Blake Ezer. And that's a good kick. That's Johnson way back in the end zone, and he will not bring it out, so they'll start from the 20-yard line. First and 10. Defensively, Iowa coming on the field. At end, Joe Mott, number 97, out of Endicott, New York. At tackle, Myron Kepi, number... Mott was 97, Kepi, 77. There's Dave Haight. He made the big fumble that set everything up. Joe Schuster is the right tackle, and Mike Burke is at the end from Davenport, Iowa. Linebackers, J.J. Puck, number 32, one of the captains, and Brad Quast. Was he an outstanding freshman and having a good sophomore year? First and ten. Not the eye formation this time. McAllister comes out throwing if he can get the ball away. Now throws it down here and out of bounds. The nearest man is Willie Boyer. But there's a flag at the 13-yard line. Thrown in the backfield of Michigan State, and that's why right there. Hold it. Trying to protect McAllister. The rest of the Hawkeye defense in the secondary, Greg Brown, right from right here in Iowa City. He's a sophomore. Merton Hanks, the other cornerback from Dallas, Texas. Kerry Burt, strong safety out of Waterloo, Iowa. And Dwight Sistrunk, who is here from Dayton, Ohio. They'll move back. Quarterback McAllister, Lorenzo White, James Moore, the running backs. Risen and Boyer are the wide receivers and sergeant at tight end for Michigan State. Mandarich, Kula, Schumer, Tata, and Robbins. Robbins starting over Hool at right offensive tackle. Make it first down still, but 20 yards to go. 14-7, Iowa. Lorenzo White, no! That was Merton Hanks, the cornerback, a sophomore, right there waiting for Len Lorenzo White. George Perlis's team has not been able to score too much. Eight points against Notre Dame, three against Florida State, and only seven here today. On the other hand, Hayden Fry, after losing that heartbreaker to Tennessee, edged Arizona, walloped Iowa State, and after a slow start, walloped Kansas State. Schuster, number 72. And that Iowa defense, Steve, that Hayden Fry talked about has done the job on the first couple of plays. Well, the Michigan State coaches really felt like that they had to 
exposed the outside linebackers of Iowa and the two cornerbacks, Hanks and Brown and the cornerbacks, Mott and Burke are the outside linebackers with the defensive ends. And they've really been able to, they've played very well. And that's why those sweep plays are not being as effective. They're not being able to control those perimeter people. It is third down and a lot, 22 to go. Lorenzo White. the safety by that much. What really made the great defensive play for Iowa was number 97, Joe Mott. He's a, he's a senior, he's strong defensive end, not real agile, but see, there he is. He keeps Lorenzo White inside and forces him to turn back. They've had problems in the past with Mott containing people in the sweep, but he did a great job that time. Mike Burke gets the tackle. Greg Montgomery, the All-American, needs an All-American kick here. Gets it away and drives it deep. Marciano has the ball and all the way back to his own 38-yard line. Over the shoulder catch. But that's better than what a lot of people have a right to expect. The line of scrimmage was the one. After a return, it is still about a 52 or three-year pickup, yard pickup on the play. The key is, is how quickly he's able to get the ball to the foot, get it off. He does such a great job. And then to be able to put that kind of distance on the ball and kick it so far and give them best field position possible because really that could have been a disastrous situation for Michigan State. Can you imagine being 60 yards from a line of scrimmage and have to catch the ball over your shoulder going away from the punter? That's what Marciano had to do. Greg Montgomery came over from Penn State has been quite a kicker from Michigan State. First down from the 47. McGuire just at the end of the first half comes out throwing, going deep. And that's for Harvard. Oh, no good. Flag down. Three men there. I think they roughed up Harberts. The wide receiver from Walnut, Iowa. See what happens as he pushed downfield. Let's see the good coverage. The break on him. They'll be as the ball comes down to the receiver. There'll be three guys right there. Actually, he's got to slow up. There it is, easily coming over, impeding the ability of the receiver to catch the ball. You've got to give him the freedom. Derek Reed, number six. Roberts, the walk-on, didn't catch the ball, but the action against him gives him Iowa first down at the 38. Now, it is still a 14-7 ball game, but the way the Iowa defense has played and the mistakes being made by Michigan State, Spartans better look out or the wheels will fall off. Defensively, Bergen and Nichols and Davis and Buddy across the forward wall, the front four for Michigan State. Wire and no place to go at all for Hudson. Hudson dragged down immediately. Nichols, one of the men that got there. Tim Moore, outstanding linebacker to St. John's, Michigan. Percy Snow, only a sophomore, and he's got the same label, outstanding. Kurt Lawson, a Wisconsin man, the other linebacker. Ball is on the 42-yard line now. Second down after the loss and 14 to go. Dwyer gets the ball across the middle. Hudson holds on to it and is hit down. It'll be third down and six to go. In most situations, Michigan State would like to really mix it up on McGuire, do a lot of different things with him. The frustration is, is that his athletic ability compensates as we look at the secondary in Michigan State. That's the transfer from SMU Reed. Barnett has made a couple of good plays at the corner. And these men moved from corner. Miller and Crum were corners last year, but now they're playing the strong and free safety spots. Third down and six to go, 14 to seven. 11-14 to go, third quarter. McGuire, Harmon, and Hudson. You saw those men with Watkins and early the wide receivers, and there's the offensive line for Iowa. Big third down play. McGuire being chased. Oh, he's got a man wide open and doesn't see him. He goes for it early. But he had number 84, Marv Cook, absolutely standing at the 25, saying, give me the football. 
And McGuire, despite the fact he's 6'8", just did not see him. As I said, Michigan State would like to really give McGuire so much more to look at. But because of his athletic ability and his able, able to get away from the pressure and stand very tall, they're somewhat re restricted in the ability to really make something happen. Marv Cook, number 84, just happens to break away, and the defender lets go of him. Unfortunately, McGuire couldn't find him, and he forces the ball down the sidelines to early. 51-yard try for Rob Houtland. He is capable, and let's see what he does. It looks like it's going to be off to the right and a little short. And so there's not been a made field goal today. Two have been missed by Michigan State. Houtland misses his first. 10.50 to go, third quarter. Still, Iowa 14, Michigan State 7. One of the most exciting football players to play college football in many, many years. He's extremely gifted, elusive, powerful, tough, smart. He's also a fine receiver. Outside of that, <laughs> what else does Lorenzo White have to do? Remember, they came within a yard of a safety. Got the ball. Outstanding kick by Montgomery. Iowa couldn't do anything with it. Now Michigan State down by seven. First down at their own 33. 10.50 to go, third quarter. McAllister looking to run, looking to get outside, and is strung out of across the way. And out of bounds by Hanks. Let's go down to John Snyder. We saw in the first defensive series of the second half for Iowa how well they did against the Michigan State offensive line. An adjustment made at halftime will try to help that defensive line get Dave Haight open because Michigan State's offensive line did a great job in the first half of sealing off the great Iowa nose guard. So they're going to use the linebackers a little bit more, show McAllister a lot of stunts and moves into the backfield. Hey, John Snyder, take advantage of these nice sunny days on the sidelines, will you? You know, went down to 27 degrees here in Iowa. You will have your day. <laughs> Second down, seven to go. And again, Lorenzo White, big hole for him. And he gets across the 40, picks up five. That'll be third and two. Other scores, look at that. Michigan 42, Wisconsin nothing. On the one hand, as we take a look at the other scores, Michigan State has to play Michigan next week, whereas Iowa gets Wisconsin. Look at Texas Tech. Oklahoma leading Iowa State 7 nothing. Third down and short. Blake Elzer is in there, but that's Elzer with the football, and Elzer's got the first down. The sophomore out of Las Vegas, Nevada, Ezor. Let me tell you about something about Blake Ezor. His father was a pit boss, or is a pit boss, in Las Vegas. George Protus, when with the Steelers, used to go out there, became friends of him. And uh, Blake's father liked him. And so when young Ezor made almost every high school All-American team, he almost personally handed them on a platter to George Protus at Michigan State. He's a 4-4 sprinter as a sophomore. And there he goes again, and you can see the fast start he gets giving Lorenzo White a little blow here, and Ezor is picking up the slack. Admirable. Had mononucleosis last year, missed half the season, and been a little slow in coming back. Tim Anderson checks in at tackle for Iowa. Kepi comes out. Second down and five. Ezor remains in there. Gonna give him the ball again. Looking to get outside, nowhere to go there. That's that man, Merton Hanks, putting him down again, number 45. And here comes Lorenzo White back in on third down. And Ezor goes out. As I said at halftime, I really felt like that Bobby McAllister was going to have to contribute in the ability to throw the ball and take the pressure off of the tailback game that Michigan State had to rely on in the first half. They've got to have some success to hit the receivers, Boyer, Sargent, and Ryzen, and they have not been able to do it. They've got to be able to have success some way in throwing the ball. Really contrasting styles. McGuire's throwing the ball more in one series, and McAllister has in the entire game. Ryzen has got a lot of speed out wide to the right. Brown is on him. They get the ball to Lorenzo. Lorenzo goes for the first down, and a flag is down. White going for the first down may have come up short at the Iowa 45, but there's a flag at the Iowa 46. One of the real problems that the Michigan State coaches have offensively in play selection right now, and play selection isn't, it's overrated anyway. Let's listen to the call. Dave hates a little shaken up. 
Holding again, Michigan State trying to get White wide. But the frustration of not wanting to put Bobby McAllister in a situation where he may shake his already rather shaken confidence. And so that's the frustration that they have. If you throw the ball, you're putting the quarterback out there in the spotlight, and they're just wanting to build his confidence. His first half did nothing to build the confidence, especially with one completion out of five throws. Iron Berry comes into the game defensively. Now Steve Thomas comes in. That illustrates perfectly why Michigan State has to, they're going to have to take chances. Sometimes you've gone with the quarterback, you've made your decision, you've got to put him in a situation where he can perform. You can't wait too long on him. But Steve, there's a little imbalance on both sides. The passing of Iowa to the only 27 yards running, the five yards passing of McAllister to the better than 100 yards by the runners. Yeah, but the contrast is, is McGuire's throwing and they want him to perform at that level. Third down, 14 to go. Let's see if McAllister throws here. Dropping straight back this time. Blitz is on, steps around one man. Good athletic ability to do that. Now he's, nope, not gonna throw. I thought he might try to hit Lorenzo White, who was covered very well by Greg Brown. And so out of bounds, he goes near the 40, and he is still out and down. That is Steve Thomas getting up. Hudson looking on. Dan Worth gets up, and there goes Bobby McAllister. Okay. Oh, Montgomery will be called on with that foot again. And Peter Marciano. With great respect for the leg of Montgomery. He's standing nearly 45 yards away from the line of scrimmage, Marciano. And unlike Adams, Montgomery stands 15 yards back to kick. Look at this. High. Good. No fair catch called for, and he's in deep trouble. And a flag is down as Marciano goes down at the nine. Flag down. We'll check it when we come back. 8.22 to go. We'll come right back with more Big Ten football in a moment. Iowa 14, Michigan State 7. You know what I like best about fishing? Yeah, the catch of the day. Come on, let's we'll show you how a good time goes. We're going to a place where they talk strolls. Cause a good time's better with a good time beer. And Stroh's is spoken here. Stroh's. Fire brewed for smooth, consistent taste. Now you're talking beer. A good time's better with a good time beer. And Stroh's is spoken here. Everyone who comes to Kuppenheimer used to shop someplace else. Maybe where you're buying your clothes right now. This Glenn Blatt suit cost me $165. At the suit as nice as this would have cost a whole lot more. I thought there was a great selection at until I discovered Kuppenheimer. What's our secret? We make every suit ourselves. There's no middleman, so we can give you more suit for your money than anybody. Come to Kuppenheimer, and you may never again shop at or or even this is the bullpen, full of used cars at your Metro Detroit Ford dealers. Not any used car, an A1 used car. Now this is my bullpen, full of dependable used cars. Your Ford dealers take pride in making sure you get A1 price, style, selection, and affordability. No matter what make or model used car you choose. Believe me when I tell you, this is Detroit's best team. Bill Brown, Livonia, Royal Oak Ford, Royal Oak, Southgate Ford, Southgate, Bob Thibodeau, Centerline. 14 to 7, the penalty clipping against Iowa moves the ball back deep in their own territory to the four yard line where it is first and 10. 8.22 left in the third quarter. It's 14 to 7, Iowa. And McGuire has shown a willingness to throw from nearly everywhere. This time he hands off to the second man through Duncan, and he is written down. Percy Snow makes the stop. Iowa's offensive line are big and they're physical. There's Mark Nichols, number 83. He's really one of their top players in the defensive front for Michigan State. Watch what happens. Alexander just turns, just literally gets buried in there. 
I'll tell you what, it, it's not fun being a defensive lineman. I thought being a wishbone quarterback was bad, but I think being a defensive lineman may be worse. <laughs> the question is, do we accept the penalty for motion, does Michigan State, or do they refuse the penalty? They're going to accept the penalty. Ball was on the four. Legal shift, two men moving against the offense. Half the distance, repeat, first down. Oh, it'll be first down and 12 from just over the two-yard line. Moments ago, Michigan State was at its own one-yard line. You know, I think that really illustrates the point, not to second-guess Hayden Fry. I made a commitment I wouldn't criticize Mech's wife, eat airplane food, or criticize Big Ten coaches, but you, I think because they're just now settling on quarterbacks that they're making these kind of mistakes in the first game of the Big Ten uh, conference. Hudson doesn't get anywhere. And to the second down. Because I really believe that if they would have settled on a quarterback earlier in the year, those type of mistakes, different things that they, where the quarterback's having problems or miscommunication or procedure penalties, would have been correct. We have another quarterback coming in for the first time today. Tom Pohowski is coming in. He started the game, and McGuire is coming out on second down. Pohowski started last year against Michigan State. It was a surprise, and they won that game. Quick kick. He is in there, but he is not going to do anything because on second down, they're going to punt the ball away. Now they're going to give it to Pohowski, and whistles blow, and something happened before the whistle. That is your trick play, to have Adam standing back there, Pohowski in the game, coming back to take the pitch back to throw the pass delay of game so there for naught goes that little trip you know Hayden Fry has always had the reputation of throwing in little wrinkles and this is one of the wrinkles he had this back at SMU North Texas State it's not gotten away from him I promise you there's the wrinkle it was a good concept just didn't get it off well now Pohowski I guess Tom is thinking about how are the Cardinals going to do because his father used to pitch for them as well as a cup and of course the Cardinals made the playoffs but he is out of there. Head and fries hey, upset at what happened. That goes that trick play for the day, perhaps. So Mark Adams will have to kick the ball away. This time he's not deep because he can't get out of the end zone. From at the 38, Michigan State will have outstanding field position. From inside the 25 to the 23, down 14 to 7. State has an outstanding chance now to put something on the board. Iowa has missed a field goal. Michigan State has missed two field goals. Iowa's had an opportunity on the fumble at the 22, come away with nothing. Or rather, Michigan State and Iowa's had the ball at the Michigan State 28 and come away with the go-ahead touchdown. If Michigan State loses the ball game, it will not be because they did not have the opportunities in field position. Few and White the setbacks. Gonna give it a White. Runs out of time, and there is that man one more time, Merton Hanks. Let's go get a Dave Diles. It's gone from being a laugher to a real rout at Ann Arbor, Michigan, leading over Wisconsin at the half, 42 to nothing. Michigan, 412 yard total offense in the first half, and Indiana leads Northwestern, second quarter. The score is 14 to 3. Back to the Iowa Michigan State game. Lorenzo White not in there now. Ezer is, has 100 yards. They'll give it to Blake Ezer, who's got that speed. Tell you what, he got out of the hands there of Joe Schuster pretty well and picked up an extra few yards. Ezer is no small man, nor is he big, 5'10", 184. But Schuster had him, and he just ran right out of his arms. On that exchange of punts, and admittedly, Adams was kicking from his end zone, but Greg Montgomery is the All-American. Michigan State picked up about 30 yards on the exchange of the punts. Ezer's in the ball game. He's quick. He's got the same ability. He gives him a contrast. He'll shoot the gap. He'll not try to string it out. Third and three. Ezer again. Room again. Ezer close to the first down inside the 15-yard line. He's got to get the ball across the 14-yard line for the first down. The defensive coaches told me that Dwight sister tackled like a linebacker, and I tell you what, he put his helmet right on uh, Ezor, number 26. I mean, that was an excellent tackle. They're moving those sticks. It's first down Michigan State, down by seven. 
Well, nose of the ball almost on the 13-yard line. Rising way out here wide to the right, and Greg Brown comes over to cover him with a little help. Pitch back to Ezer. Ezer is dragged down. Good play there. Did not run out of the arms there of Steve Thomas. We told you that Pate was out of there. Well, he is. But Thomas is also in there. Let, let's see. Hate's in there. I think also, let's see. Steve Thomas is also in there, so both players are in the ball game. Thomas actually backs up Dave Hake, number 64. They call him a fire plug, and he just fire plug, and he just has a tendency to make the plays. At that time, he was able to get away, and nobody knocked him down, and he made the play. Both are listed as nose guards, but as you said, both are in there. Thomas, a transfer from Nebraska. Here's McAllister looking to get it away and throws the ball up for grabs out of bounds. And all of a sudden, it is third down. And a flag is down at the 12-yard line. Eight coming off, pointing toward Michigan State. Tom Quinzelman will tell us what really happened. Downfield. Eligible receiver downfield. Eight, as we said, has been limping since he got his leg banged into toward the end of the second quarter. And he has been in there, and Thomas has replaced him, and Thomas and Hayden both been in at the same time, but Hayden is now out on a long yardage situation. Second down and 14 to go. And again, as they're going to step off even more yardage to make it second down and a lot more than that. Here we are, Steve, with a chance for Michigan State well down inside the 20-yard line of Iowa. And thus far, the other opportunity, they were unable to do anything with it. They don't want to let this get away. They're not that many chances against Iowa's defense, which has proven to be very tough. Kerry Burt comes back in as strong safety for Iowa, number three. And Mike Stoops comes out. Mike Stoops. Second down. And 18 maker. Long way to go for a non-passing team. The guy's going to try to put it up. Puts it up for Ryzen. And a flag because they actually held Ryzen in the end zone. He was held in the end zone. Jim, is this my impression or does this game appear to be pretty sloppy? <laughs> Andre Ryzen, let's see who holds him. The out route, he's trying to push away. The player, the defensive player is beat right here, and that's where he's trying to make up the difference. He grabs him around the waist and tries to hold him. Greg Brown is the culprit. Here it is again. Ryzen does a good job. The hand fake inside. Then he's going to cut outside and break. The defensive back has beaten Greg Brown, and he's trying to recover, and he grabs hold of Ryzen. First down after the penalty. No. Check that. Second down. They were down, remember, 18. That's a 15-yard penalty. That's right. And I'll give one to Tom Quinn there because he signaled first down and then and then shook it off. Yeah, there he is. There's his left arm as he grabs him right around the middle. Yep. And it was enough. The penalty, the 15-yard penalty, gave him enough to get the first down. Well, it You're wasn't right. enough, really, because it was it was 18 yards to go. Lorenzo White back against the seam. Look out, Lorenzo White. It'll be second down and goal to go from about the five. 14 to seven, Iowa. Five minutes to go, third quarter, and State on the move. We'll repeat ourselves, but I know the people that watch Michigan State and Iowa year after year after year say it's another one of those games. Seemingly always happens. A couple of years ago, remember? State was coming back, coming back, coming back, only to be intercepted on a pass from the four-yard line in the last minute and a half. That saved the game for Iowa. They don't have enough people here. Time has been called. They got to call time. There was no tight end. The Savage was coming on the field and came on almost as time was running out. But well, they've called time. 4.30 to go. Second down and goal to go. 
14 to 7, Iowa leads. Manage. To hang on his leg, ankle, down there. He is the big nose guard, and John Snyder knows all about it. Trainer at Iowa, he's got a sprained left ankle, but his ankle is being taped. He came in and said, put some tape on it. I'm going back out on the field, and he will be back out there in just a couple of minutes. Remember, John, back in the first half, he came out with a bloody nose. Now he's back with a sprained ankle. All Big Ten last year, honorable mention All-American, and could be destined for even greater things this year. Second down from the five. They can pick up a first down should they get the ball over the one. Four and a half minutes to go, third quarter. Opening game of the Big Ten and Michigan State with its best opportunity in some time. Helped immeasurably by the punting of Greg Montgomery. To keep Iowa back on its heels. Now Iowa's fans are saying, hold it down. And Michigan State is permitted to drop back off the line of scrimmage. Well, here comes Dave Haight again. He's back in there. John Snodder was right again. So Keppel will come out and put Dave Haight right back in the middle. Now again, second down from the five. Boyer is the only wide receiver, and he is to the right. Up, 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 up. Before the snap, though, no flag. White carries the ball, maybe he got a yard. Third down. About three to go for the first down, and four to go for the touchdown. Boyer almost made the move, but caught himself. Tim Anderson coming into the defensive line for Myron Kepi for Iowa. And here comes Blake Ezer. Now they take out Lorenzo White. McAllister fakes and falls down. Might have made it down even closer to the goal line, but faked and his legs went out from under him, and it may be time for John Langlow. Well, I think it's real important, and I think George Perlis is probably going to go for the field goal. They've got to go down and get something, and I think the frustration, I, I, that was the play I wouldn't have run, but again, I said I'm not going to second-guess a coach, but... The point is they've got to get points. They've been down here too many times and not been able to convert. They've had great field position. They've got to come away with something, and that's why the field goal attempt. Of 21 yards for Langlow, who was 3 for 3 before today, and he's 0 for 2 today. Montgomery to hold, 21 yards out from an angle left to right, or right to left. In any event, it is good of 21 yards, and we'll come right back. More Big Ten football in just a moment. They come away with three. The score here at Iowa City is now Iowa 14, Michigan State 10. We are back, and Langlow will kick off. Tony Stewart deep along with Peter Marciano, and Marciano has been returning punts, will return this kickoff from the four. Nice open field tackle inside the 20-yard line for Michigan State. Benson Donaldson. And yes, Dan McGuire is coming back out. He was only out for that one offensive play when they brought in Poholsky on a fake punt. 2.58 left third quarter. Travis Watkins, who caught one touchdown pass wide to the left, as is early Quinn, who caught the other touchdown pass. No place to go. The running game of Iowa is almost non-existent, as is the passing game of Michigan State. Harmon had all that success, 100 yards in each of the last two games for Kevin Harmon, and he's nowhere near it today. Yeah. 
28 yards thus far for Kevin Harmon. Now early goes to the right and Watkins to the left. Second down, 14. Ball at the 15. McGuire being chased, putting the ball up in the air, and a chance for Derek Reed, but he is out of bounds when he made the interception. He intended, of course, for Quinn Early. And it is third down and 14. Now, Steve, this is the first day of the Big Ten competition, but let's face it. Iowa's played four games, Michigan State three, and the offense on both sides is not clicking, and you've already given one indication of why for Iowa. They've started three different quarterbacks. Not three in this game, but three previous. There's no been four-game experience for any one quarterback or even two-game experience. Here's McGuire running out. He's got time, but he loves. Look out! Down he goes for another sack. Most defensive football coaches want to get one phase of the game controlled. What Michigan State has done is control the running game today, and even though it's probably not the preferred against Iowa in the passing game, but they've been able to get them in predictable passing situations. They've controlled the running game. Now they know that they've got to go play pass. They play good pass defense, and he was not able to convert to a first and ten. Now here, even in the end zone, Mark Adams with that short drop as a punter. Gets the ball away. And it takes a bounce back the other way and has kicked at about the 29 yard line. Now that is about a 23 yard net punt with no return at all. Uh, that's been a big problem. Remember, Michigan State got its last three, uh, three points because of a punting superiority of Montgomery over Adams. Tonight, many of you on these Big Ten Network stations will see Purdue and Minnesota at 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Central Time. Next week, Steve and I will be at Northwestern along with John Snyder, and Minnesota will be in town. The up man takes the ball. Joe Pugh. Not get much. Your kicking game cannot continue to put your defense in this type of pressure, giving Michigan State tremendous field position. And it's going to catch up with them in Michigan State. They were able to convert the last time, and now if they're able to convert on this time, it's just simply because of bad field position for Iowa and the offense not being able to give them any opportunity to play good defense and have a lot of field to work with. For the last 45 seconds of the third quarter, McAllister, all the time in the world, waits a long while, and now is going to pull the ball, and it is out of bounds. Myron Kepi wants him called for throwing the ball away, but there'll be no call. Army now making it closer with Wake Forest. Wake Forest still leading by four in the final quarter. Navy having a tough year. Virginia Tech 23, Navy three in the third quarter. Michigan, Laura Schembrechler opening of the Big Ten, doing what comes naturally, I guess. Third down. McAllister is one for six. Rising wide to the right. Lorenzo White is out of the backfield. They'll throw the ball, and that ball is dropped by Willie Boyer. Looking for some kind of interference call. Mark Stoops was there to help break it up. Mark Stoops, number 41, he's the third of the Stoops boys, and two have played here at Iowa. Does a good job of being able to react, knows when the ball's going to be there, and he just slides around, not coming through the receiver, put his hand just in there, no interference whatsoever. Yeah, but when you drop a ball like that, you want somebody to believe there was interference. Now, the field goal attempt of 46 yards for Langlow, and this one's got plenty of foot. What about the distance? He's got it. After missing the first two, Langlow has now hit two in a row, and this is a one-point ball game with 25 seconds to go in the third quarter. 
And again, the punting. You're talking about bad field position, Steve, but a lot of that has had to do with the poor putting of Iowa and the superior punting of Michigan State. 14-13. And Langlow has finally found his foot. So many times you've got to be able to have good things happen in all phases of the game, and the kicking game is so important. Now they're in a position with a one-point ball game because of that man right there. We're back to doing what comes naturally. These are the meetings we're talking about. When you add them all up, and remember, there's only one Michigan State win. That was by one point. All five of the last games played have been settled by a total of 20 points. And it's a one-point game now. But 25 seconds to go third quarter. Langlow will kick it off. Marciano deep. Along with Tony Stewart. Iowa, remember, played Tennessee, and Tennessee's a good football team. Right down a couple of, well, one big unusual play, and then a pass interference penalty helped Tennessee win that one by one point. Since then, Iowa's beaten Arizona, Iowa State, Kansas State, but they had their hands full today. Marciano at the three-yard line, looking for that break up the middle, does not get it. Greg Johnson made the stop. They'll spot the ball at the 23. And Mark McGuire comes back in. Steve, it's been about what we talked about. Is Mark, uh, Dan McGuire, I called him Mark, his brother, Dan McGuire being force fed? And when will Bobby McAllister turn out to be a passer? Look at this. No way to go. Hudson got the ball, and a man was right in the backfield with him. Absolutely nowhere to go. As Mansky made the stop as the third quarter ends, couldn't want a better ball game. Iowa 14, Michigan State 13. I see you've got homework, too. It never ends. Well, at the 19-yard line of Iowa, second down and 14, they lead by a point. Wire running out of time. He throws the ball. He intended for Hudson, his running back. And for a moment, it looked as though it might be intercepted. Nichols was the man putting the pressure on. Well, third quarter spat, stats, what really jumps out at you still, Michigan State not being able to create anything in the passing game is really the, the key to the ball game. They've got to be able to get some help. They've been able to take advantage of, of some field position opportunities in the third quarter that they could not convert in the first half. Kevin Harmon is not in the game. Tony Stewart is in the game along with Hudson. Wires throwing, and that ball's tipped away. Fine play there by Harlan Barnett, the cornerback, the sophomore of Cincinnati. Fourth down. Michigan State, we've shown Mark Nichols several times today fighting just every with every ounce of uh, courage that he's got to be able to try to get to the quarterback. They've been able to put a little bit more pressure on Dan McGuire in, this third, in the third quarter and here early in the fourth quarter. I That's what's forced those throws. I tell you, Mark Nichols is quite a pass rusher. Adams at short punt formation. Ryzen is the man deep at about the 42. And that's really even a worse punt, but they may get a good roll out of it. Ryzen will let that thing drop right there. Now it goes back to about the 43. And Adams is having a tough, tough day punting the ball. And so it is not outstanding field position, but still comfortable field position for Michigan State. Other Big Ten games today, Michigan blowing by Wisconsin. Indiana handling Northwestern. Ohio State, that is later today at Illinois, coming off that tie down with LSU. And tonight at 7 o'clock Eastern time will be our broadcast time. The kickoff is actually 7.20, Purdue and Minnesota. 
from the 37 and a half yard line Michigan State down by a point. This is Lorenzo White and White picks up 10 maybe 11 yards. Saying that. They may have to measure. Maybe it's nine yards and ten inches. But he's got 111 yards himself. They'll bring out the sticks. Field position. They feel it's all field position. McGuire's the guy, and he's going to be in there for the foreseeable future. He's the guy they're going to stick with. That's shot. Oh, well, they have the luxury here of second down and short. Jeff Keppel, a sophomore, comes into the defensive line as they take out an offensive back, Dwight Sistron. Expecting, of course, Michigan State to make the short run if they can for the first down. Rising the only man wide, and he's way wide to the right. Tight end is in a down position here, and McAllister carries the ball and has the first down. Let's go to John Snyder. There's been some discussion along the Iowa sideline, but for now, Dan McGuire stays in at quarterback with Pahalski and Hartley who have been reserved. Of course, they both started games this year. The feeling along the Iowa bench is that he's just had terrible field position to work with. He's been spotting up and down in the second half, but they feel one big play would get him out, get him into some field position, and his confidence would come back. Thank you, John. Blake Ezer comes back in again. They're showing uh, that they will use him more and more as Lorenzo White goes out. Ezer's number is 26. Oh, my. That was Mandarich. Tony just jumped offside from his left tackle spot. We have an important message for Dr. James Ward. That'll be first and 15. Maybe we ought to extend the preseason play in non-conference play. Maybe that's what we ought to do. Again, another mistake. The offensive line jumping off. This has been a problem for Michigan State today. Everybody's moving. Illegal procedure. Illegal procedure. They've not been in a ball game like this, Michigan State, since the opener when they defeated Southern Cal. And they've already scored more points today against Iowa than they managed against Notre Dame and Florida State combined. But be aware that Iowa is a big fourth quarter team in the fourth quarter thus far this year. They have scored 40 points and their opponents have scored nine points. Jim, I've been in this situation before where you're making little mistakes and you have to, as a player, separate yourself from the frustration and not let it intimidate you or let get down because you're making these pity mistakes. First and 15. Here's Ezer. He has got some speed, but he is hit hard and goes down after picking up the five yards they lost on the penalty. I want to tell you that Kerry Burt, really the strong safety, took a pop on that one. That was slow getting up. Second down and ten. Mark the ball at the 49-yard line of Michigan State. 23 yards now for Blake Ezer. Second down and ten from the 49. Lorenzo White 116. McAllister throwing, throwing low, incomplete, intended for Lorenzo on the far sideline. Auburn has been tied by North Carolina at 10 in the third quarter. That's a surprise. Penn State after slow start. Well out in front of Temple, 24 to 3. Texas A&M still behind, but they were behind 24-14. They've closed within six. Georgia leading Mississippi. This is third down and 10. McAllister. Will not. Yes, he does get it away and overthrows any possible receiver and throws it out of bounds. Joe Pugh was the nearest man to it, number 38. Well, here comes one of the best weapons that Michigan State has, and that'll be Greg Montgomery, the punter. Marciano will go deep. And Dave Haight comes off to the plaudits of his teammates. 
Well, 57 left in this one-point game. All right, the line of scrimmage is the 48-yard line. Let's see where Montgomery kicks this ball. He's standing on his own 33. That was not a great kick, but gets the job done as it goes out inside the 20 at the 16-yard line. 12.48 to go in the game. Iowa up by one, 14-13. Well, have no idea, but they are warming up the other two Iowa quarterbacks. Second down and seven from the 19. Marnot. There's the young freshman Tony Stewart going nowhere. He is tripped up in the backfield. Replacing Harmon, per Percy Snow in on the tackle. There's Hart Lee and down. There, throwing the ball, is number 14, Poholsky. Well, here's a big play for both teams again. Third down and nearly 10 to go. And Adams will have to kick the ball away. Unless they pick this up. Three wide receivers, but they won't pick it up. Hudson just barely gets beyond the line of scrimmage. So they'll have to bring on the punter. Running the ball three straight plays illustrates the frustration, I think, of the offensive coaches. Yes, the field position's bad, but they're gonna, they've are gonna they had problems in the punting game, so you know that they probably may not get very good field position again, but they're playing it safe. They don't want to make a mistake, so somewhat their confidence might be a little bit shaken in their quarterback. Mark Adams will be happy that the wind is behind him for this punt. He's been kicking into the wind throughout the third quarter. He tries to get a penalty, but does not rise him with the ball at the 40. And what is going to go that way? And look at this. Dragged down across the way, but Risen gets it down to the 38-yard line of Iowa. And again, the kicking game, largely because of Risen here, puts Iowa in the hole and gives Michigan State outstanding field position. Risen's Andre really sets himself up. Watch what he does. He brings them all in. Let's have a little meeting, boys. Come on in here. Yep, let's all get right here, okay? Now, there he goes. He's got them all set up. He's able to break away from it. He set up his own opportunity. It looked disastrous, but he's able to create the opportunity for himself. Marv Cook knocked him out of bounds, but not until he gets inside the 40-yard line. Michigan State's kicking game, the field position that they've been able to create for themselves, the poor kicking game of Iowa has given them the real chance here. Now the other key is they don't have to put the pressure on their quarterback. He's not got a throw. He doesn't have to come from a seven-point deficit. Now he can work with field position and a one-point difference. Mike Burke shaken up. The defensive right end for Iowa has to come off the field. Lorenzo White. Sistrunk chasing him and takes him out of bounds. But he gets the ball down to the 29-yard line. Let's go quickly to John Snyder. Kevin Harmon, the outstanding running back for Iowa, has a sprained ankle, may or may not be back in the game. And the two backup quarterbacks, Pahulski and Hartlieb, have both been warming up. And depending on the field position and the time left in the game, when Iowa gets it back, we may see a new quarterback. Thank you, John. Now we know why Tony Stewart has been playing the running back spot for Kevin Harmon. Second and very short. Both benches on their feet. We have an important message for Patricia Williams of Davenport. 10.34 left, Iowa 14, Michigan State 13. And this is an official's timeout. Lorenzo White only needs 24 more yards, and he will be in third place in the history of Big Ten rushing. Behind Archie Griffin and Butch Wolfel. May get some of that here. May get a lot of it here. Good play by Sistrunk to get him at the 29, but Lorenzo gets down to about the 24. If Anderson comes into the defensive lineup, Joe Schuster comes out for Iowa. It's a first down Iowa, 14-13. Michigan, Michigan State leads or trails Iowa, 10-30 to go. Iowa 14, Michigan State 13. 
130 yards for Lorenzo White. Come on, defense. Boyer wide to the right. Lorenzo again, big hole down the middle. He's got another first down. Inside the 15-yard line is galloping toward third place in the Big Ten and galloping toward a Michigan State score of some kind. They're really doing a good job on Dave Haight. He's been really a, a key player all day today. There's his quickness. He's switching around, leaves the center behind, and Tata 61 picks him up and fights him all the way through, holds him up there where he, Lorenzo can get into the secondary. First down from the 14-yard line, Lorenzo White. White knocked down as he gets near the 10-yard line. What Michigan State's doing so well in this drive and in really in the second half, great plays on first and second down, so they get in that third and short situation, and there was, we see the graphic illustrating where Lorenzo White is now, but the thing is, they've really helped themselves in the down and distance situation by being able to make good plays in the early downs. Lorenzo White, five yards, and he is the third. Man on that list. Lorenzo White. That's some of them. Remember, they're already within Langlow's range easily to put him ahead should he make a field goal. After missing two, he's made his last two. As I've talked about Dave Haight all day, he is so quick in watching films and trying to evaluate. He is so quick. Rarely does he get into a power physical game with you. There he just, they just turn him loose and let his quickness beat him. Nobody blocks him. He's too quick in that situation. He's not watching where the ball carrier is and he's getting himself out of position so he's having to turn back to make the tackle. Michigan State takes timeout. Indecision in the huddle. They've called timeout. McAllister has gone to the sidelines. 8.50 to go and we'll come right back with more Big Ten football in a moment. The score here in Iowa City, Iowa. It's a good game. Iowa 14, Michigan State to the play on third down and four for this is a big play. But keep in mind with 8.50 to go the Spartans of Michigan State have but one timeout left. One. Third down, four to go. The ball at the eight-yard line. McAllister loops it for the end zone and touchdown. Number 49, Mike Sargent. The tight end. And that is his fourth catch of this year and the first touchdown catch of this year. And Michigan State leads 19 to 14. McAllister had not looked to be an effective passer at all, but seemingly on that play, cool, calm, and had it all the way. Michigan State appears to be going for two points to give it the seven-point margin for obvious reasons. By our calculation, and we can check it, that's the first touchdown pass Mike Sargent has caught. But we'll check it. Meaning in his career. Going for the two, as you said, McAllister going out. Looking to throw, better get rid of it. Throws it this time and battered away across the way by Haight. Haight makes the play. And the score remains 19 to 14. What a great call for Michigan State to be able to take advantage of a couple of things. First of all, it's not anticipated. Probably it's a reverse. They're thinking Lorenzo White, so they fake it back to him. And then to give confidence to your quarterback and a guy that's not caught a touchdown pass. There it is, Mike Sargent. Everybody is really I think overwhelmed a little bit by the call good job by Sargent to get away from the coverage and just get behind the defender there he is watch Sargent number 49 the tight end blocks and then he'll release outside good fake inside everybody thinks Lorenzo White's going to carry the football we had we knew what we were going to do here oh yeah behind him right there <laughs> he's in Tell you what, we knew what we were going to do when he's caught four passes in his career and never a touchdown pass, but we were right on it. Here's, <laughs> here's the failed two-point play, trying to get the seven points difference. The play just gets strung out, takes too much time. The defense is able to react. McAllister's got to throw off balance, a poor pass into coverage. 
and Haight knocked it down. So now Langlow will kick off and Marciano and Stewart of the Deep Men. Iowa scored first in the first quarter on a pass of 19 yards from McGuire to Early. Since then, it's been Seesaw, and now Michigan State has the lead 19-14 with 8.46 to go. Peter Marciano back there with Tony Stewart. Very high, very short, fair catch called for by Harberts, who falls down with the ball at the 27-yard line. But it'll be first and 10 for Iowa. They have not yet stopped. It is McGuire. He will remain in the game. Here's another look at Mike Sargent, the tight end, fine blocker, good receiver, doesn't have great speed, but he just turns and gets behind the defender, makes the catch. Now they line up flag in the backfield. Now put him at the tight end spot with Hudson, the only remaining setback. McGuire puts it out here for Hudson. Hudson, oh, he did a neat job there in stepping right by Kurt Lawson, the linebacker, and picked up some extra yardage. But it is still not a big yardage play. Takes the ball out to the 31-yard line where it is second down and eight to go. Toronto and Detroit all tied in the standings in the top of the third Toronto leading today. Now, what could happen, of course, is one could win today and the other tomorrow, and we'd have a playoff of one game. Wake Forest, final, beat Army 17-13. Second and six. McGuire looking as his man early, and that's the first down across the 40-yard line to about the 43-yard line. He's put down there by Derek Reed. Michigan State went into a blitz, and that's caused the single-man coverage with Derek Reed working on early. Had nine catches in the Tennessee game and really has been the most improved player. Breaks to the ball. He got away from the defender, came towards the ball, put it away, and secured the first and ten. McGuire, 14 of 24 for 141 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Almost fell down, but the running back is going to go down. Tell you what, welcome to Big Ten football, Tony Stewart. Lost on the play. John Buddy put him down in a hurry. Stewart, remember, playing because Harmon is hurt. North Carolina State has won its second in a row. Last week, Maryland. This week, Georgia Tech doing very well in the ACC. Florida State and Miami. Florida State 7, Miami 3 in the second quarter. Tennessee rolling over California. Holy Cross at the half, 21-7 over Colgate. Missouri and Syracuse, no score. Syracuse having a good year. Second and 15, number 37, McGuire. Over the middle, Hudson makes the catch and picked up maybe two or three yards only before he's put down by Percy Snow. Jim Mark Nichols made the play earlier that you, I think, gave it to Buddy. But at that time, Mark Nichols is really giving great effort to try to put the pressure on the quarterback. And then Percy Snow, they're really playing good coverage. They're blanketing the receiver and making it tough. But yet, Mark McGuire is finding the open. I mean, Dan McGuire is finding the open receiver. I wonder if anybody in the American League calls Mark McGuire Dan McGuire. I doubt it. I doubt it. Third down and 11 to go. 19-14 Michigan State. 6-11 left. The ball at the 42 of Iowa. Third and very long. McGuire with one pump. Now looks, now throws. Good catch. Travis Watkins, his teammate, who caught the touchdown at the end of the first half, picks up the first down inside the 45 of Michigan State. This play really illustrates the talent of Dan McGuire because his primary receiver, who he wants to go to, is early. Then he comes across and finds Travis Watkins, the, the secondary receiver. This is not the primary receiver. He looks downfield, looks off the coverage a little bit. They soften up. Then he finds the open man, Travis Watkins. That height, his field vision, gives him the ability to make that kind of play. McGuire with a spotty performance trying to bring his team back. 
And when yet another look at McGuire, wow, did they knock him down and back to the 45 yard line. They'll mark it at the 46 of Iowa. Quite a hit. Tim Moore, the linebacker, really clobbered him. And McGuire, they're calling the official for a timeout, and the trainers are out. Michigan State's defensive coaches wanted to mix it up. This is they go in a blitz package. Both their outside people are coming. Also, the linebacker, Tim Moore, is there. So they put everybody on him, and that's why they were able to make the big play and put Dan McGuire to the turf. He is still down. We'll go away and tell you all about him when he comes back. Took a big hit. 5.33 to go in the game. Iowa hopefully on the move. Michigan State hope not. It's 19 to the field under his own power. But you can tell that the fans are divided, Steve. As he came out, he got polite applause. As Chuck Hartley went in to become the quarterback, he got a rousing ovation. And he comes in on quite a spot. Second down and 19 from the 45-yard line. And Hartley's going to throw and put it out there. And that is early being taken out of bounds across the way. Greg Johnson. Chuck Hartley really gives Iowa the veteran quarterback. He's the most experienced quarterback with the system. He's the coach's quarterback on the field. He understands it. He's a great leader. Both sides of the ball, he has a tremendous understanding of it. Makes the right decisions. He just doesn't have the arm strength and the size of McGuire, but he certainly is a team favorite. Third down and eight to go. Hartley throws it out this way and has the first down to his tight end, Marv Cook. with 5.06 to go. Has the ball inside the 30. They say that Hartley doesn't always throw it pretty. That time it is sideline, the sidearm to Marv Cook. But the point is he's moving the chains. It's a first and 10. He had a terrible situation, second and 19 or whatever it was, and was able to convert to a first and 10 situation. Well, he was completing 68% of his passes starting the day, second in the Big Ten in passing efficiency, and now has a first down on the 27. Iowa down by five, but moving. Hartley on the handoff, and Hudson doesn't get much more than a yard. I don't really believe there's ever been a, a, a lot of people made it a quarterback controversy of trying to figure out which one, but they are really three very fine quarterbacks in McGuire, Hartley, and Pahalski. And uh, what a great luxury to be able to get you have one hurt and to be able to go to a veteran that can move the team down the field. It's not all that bad. Cook comes in. Hartley hampered by a finger injury much of last year. Early left, Watkins right. Second down, eight to go at the 25. Look out. Blitz is on and they got it. That takes him back across the 40-yard line. Kurt Larson from that outside linebacker spot. Michigan State has done an exceptional job in the second half with their linebackers of switching it up, making the blitz package work for them, and to being able to keep the pressure on the quarterback. It's been the kicking game and the defense for Michigan State to make up the slack of a, a rather inconsistent offense in terms of the passing game. They've really done a great job with the defense in terms of putting the pressure on the quarterbacks. Third down and 23 to go. And we'll come back with more Big Ten football in a moment. We're in Iowa City, Iowa, with a score with 4.07 to go in the game. is 19-14, Michigan 07 to go. The ball at the 40-yard line, and for Iowa, a big, big problem. They've got 23 yards to go to pick up a first down. Harbert's wide to the right. Hartley back has the time and now runs out of time and throws it for Hudson. And they say he caught the ball, but that's only a gain of maybe a yard, yard and a half. It is fourth down and still a long way to go. The ball is at the 38-yard line. Now thinking field goal, it would be 55 yards minimum if they were to think field goal, but with time running still, and now they've stopped the clock, 3.38 to go. 
that would bring them within field goal range. So they'll have to make a decision. Hart Leap talking to George Perlis and company. 1914 Michigan State, 338 in the game. Rob Outland, who apparently is going to try a 56 yard field goal. Now remember, Hart Leap is the quarterback. And remember, Hayden Fry is capable of anything, but Outland has the wind, what there is behind him. So it is a possibility, and he tries to make it a probability, and it is off to the right by, oh, 10 or 15 yards. And so Michigan State will take over with their problem to run the clock down. 3.33 to go. Iowa on a three-game winning streak. Michigan State on a two-game losing streak. This is the first game of Big Ten play. What they were trying to accomplish is get the 17 points and make it a chance where he would have an opportunity to win the ball game for them. What they have sacrificed and the risk that Hayden Fry took was the field position against an offense that has moved the ball extremely well in the second half. And that's the risk you take. And they will have to pay the piper if it uh, doesn't work out the way they intended. Ball at the 38-yard line. Michigan State, if they can win this, quite an impetus to go in a game against their cross-state rival Michigan next week. But they haven't won it yet. Lorenzo White picks up a few across the 40. But that all helps with the time. And remember, I will be hard-pressed to make the decision to call a timeout anytime soon because they only possess one more. No sense in doing that kind of thing now. And the clock is all in the favor of State. If they're able to stop them, Michigan State will punt the ball and give Iowa a terrible field position. If they were gone the other way, they might have been able to keep them pinned deep in their territory and improve their field position. But it was the risk that they took. Second down and seven. Lorenzo White, a few more yards. Takes some more seconds off. And the irony is, it so often happens in any sports, but especially collegiate sports and collegiate football, Mike Sargent, according to our records, had caught four passes in his career before today, none for a touchdown. As it stands at this moment, with two and a half minutes to go, his first touchdown of his career, and he is a senior, would be the winning score. And Bobby McAllister, we were putting his passing statistics up like not much at all but he came up with a big one third down Lorenzo White is going to get the first down and does and that could be it right there 2.12 to go they'll stop the clock to move the sticks but White picks up the first down and White is having another super day what a big play for Lorenzo White, Michigan State. George Perlis says they're one victory away from being a contender in the Big Ten. He believes it. They've had a tough time so far in the season. Lorenzo White under pressure. Everybody knows he's going to get the football, but he's able to convert to a first and ten. 158 yards for Lorenzo White. 19 to 14 the score, counting down toward two minutes. He may have not made a bigger run all day today than that one. First down of midfield. Hit down he goes, and a flag goes down. Hit hard by Joe Mott as he got to the line of scrimmage, and then a flag was thrown. And Dave Haight is still having some problems. We are holding on the offense. That'll put him back. Got to be so careful this late in the ball game. You've got your first and ten. You've got new live. Don't make mistakes to put your offense in a tough situation. That's exactly what's happened. And they've been plagued by that. George Perlis and his assistant coach next to him illustrate, boy, we can't make those mistakes. We're beating ourselves. I remember last year, it was 24-21 a final, and Michigan State was right down on the four-yard line with a minute and a half to go and was intercepted. And they've lost seven of the last eight to Iowa. Today, Iowa, better than a touchdown favorite, but now trailing by five with a minute and 45 seconds to go. Rise and wide to the right, but you can bet they're not going to throw out there, or I would bet it. Inside the 45. It is third down. Here's the big deal. They stop him here, and Montgomery would probably kick away. 
Don't know whether McGuire or Hartley would come back in, but they would have a chance. But they got to stop them here and perhaps use that timeout. Lorenzo White trying to hold on to the football does not get the first down. Misses it by several yards and time is quickly called. They're calling time right here with 50 seconds to go and we'll come right back with the final 50 seconds. Hold it. The timeout is not a timeout although the watermen are on the field and now he is being signaled off. So now we'll go away. Time is called. And we'll come back with more Big Ten football in a moment. Score, 1914, Michigan State. In the kick, Peter Marciano standing back inside his 10. 50 seconds on the clock, and there's the score, 19 to 14 in this first Big Ten game of 87. Gets it away. Marciano will let it go into the end zone. 20 yard line the ball will come out to 44 seconds to go after the game is over Dave Diles will be with us to take us around the Big Ten and around the country with today's scores and it is Hartley who will come in McGuire was put out with a big hit remember and will not finish this game up Chuck Hartley the senior will come in only this time a little bit better always 80 yards away from a winner than the situation he had when he came in to replace McGuire of second down and 18. He's got first and 10 at the 20, but 80 yards to go, and they need the touchdown. Early flanked right, Watkins split way wide right. Hartley in trouble, now gets out. Still in trouble, puts the ball up, has his man Hudson. Hudson gets away from Hartley, gets away from another man. And is out of bounds, stopping the clock at the 33-yard line with a first down and 33 seconds to go. Ball on the 33, 33 seconds to go. Out of bounds on the 34-yard line. Hartlib did a real fine job of being able to stay away first from the pressure, the be able to keep his feet, and then get himself under control to throw a good, safe pass to someone that David Hudson that could get out of bounds. Good effort, good throw and catch. Good advance by Hudson. First down. Well, they were holding Nichols. The ball is caught by Cook, but Mark Nichols was being held, and a flag is down. It's tough to keep Nichols out of there, and they had to hold him to allow Hartley to get it off, so bring it back. And that takes some of the air out of the sails of the Iowa Hawkeye fans. There's no doubt Mark Nichols, number 83. I can't tell who it is exactly. Let's see, because the referee's looking right at him. There's Nichols being held. Is it 55? All right, Alexander, Dave Alexander, knows he's beat, trying to take advantage of it. The official's right on top of it. He took the chance, held him. It cost him. First and 20 to go, 26 seconds left, 1914 Michigan State and Iowa looking for that one big play that can bring them from an upset at the hands of underdog Michigan State. To Hudson. Down he goes at the 35. 14 seconds to go, 13. They won't be able to stop it. They better get something off. Hartley trying to get it going. You can watch the clock in time. One play to go. He'll get it off. No flags. Last play. Throws it. Has his man out of bounds. Marv Cook. Game is over. And the upset has taken place. Michigan State on the pass from Bobby McAllister to Mike Sargent has won the game 19 to 14. McGuire threw through two touchdown passes was knocked out of the game. Jim Simpson, Steve Davis, John Snyder. Final score here at Iowa City, Iowa. Michigan State 19, Iowa 14. Big Ten Football 87 has been brought to you in part by Precision Tune, your engine performance experts. Detroit's quality Metro Ford dealers.